that's a million dollar lesson What you know about pressure? How you gonna act when your livelihood is threatened? How you know, has it been tested? When the chips are down, are you like Moses in the desert? What you know about betrayal? Deliver far from suffering, they stab you in the navel Like a diplomatic cable They leaking all your secrets while you leaking on the table All right, we are back at the Roman Anton podcast studio. Uh, I've had a, a full week of listening to our next guest, and I'm excited to get to talk to you, Pablo. Pablo Roy. Uh, Pablo Roy. Yeah. Pablo Roy. Yep. Huh? Why would uh, Why would I say Pablo Roy? Uh, you know, that's the natural instinct of literally everyone. <laughs> yeah. Pablo. So is 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 there a uh, where does that name come from? If I can ask that question, um, or is it not? It. So pa- pa- my name is Pablo. Uh, this is my born name, right? right? right, right. Um, so Pablo, um, and then also I I go by I used depending on the year I went by some variation sure. of the name Leroy. Mm. Leroy, uh, where does that come from? Uh, I I think it means king in French, like the king. Yeah, the raw, yeah. I, I think, um, right. but also. I was, uh, I used to play Warcraft, World of Warcraft, right? <laughs> like, Leroy Jenkins. And I, I just thought it was funny because it's like, oh, he's a warrior, but a fool. Right. You know? So like uh, the, the, like a uh, two convergence of two archetypes. Okay. And I feel like that's the idea. Like with a lot of, that's, I, I, that's I, whatever, Leroy. And, and so finally, Pob Leroy. Okay. It's, it's, it makes more sense. Good, I follow you. Uh, and so, uh, as Pablo, if I were in the United States, or maybe if I were even here asking you, I, the, I would uh, say that um, my name Joe sounds American and could be from elsewhere, but we would attribute that GI Joe with America. Would we attribute the name Pablo with a country or a place, or is that not fair to do? Um, is it is it a Hispanic name or a Mexican name, or am I already sounding like an well, idiot? Well, it's, it's a definitely a Spanish, and it's funny because that also <laughs> the the yeah. where where does that name come from? Also, it, the it depends who's asking the question, what their answer is. There so we like, go. When I'm here, everyone's like, "Oh, Spain, okay, you're Spanish." No, no, no. I'm I'm from uh, I'll say, but then I'll say I'm from Miami. But your name is Pablo. Yeah. Okay. Right? So, what was going on here? You're um, so. My fam, my family heritage is uh, from Honduras. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I'm sorry to have put you through all that. Then, so uh, a Honduran background family, Pablo could be X, could be Joe, uh, but it has uh, in your instance uh, yeah. when you're in Thailand, uh, it's a pain. Yeah. <laughs> so you just fight through it. <laughs> and um, Pab Pablo Roy, Pablo Roy, Pablo Roy. All right. Cool. So I get that. Um, well, welcome again. Uh, it's good to have you here. Uh, it's it's sort of uh, interesting to see you across the, the table after spending a, a week of listening. Um, so I'll adjust to that. Uh, um, so you've mentioned Honduras, but you also mentioned the States uh, and your website, which is awesome. A very user-friendly website, uh, oh, www.pableroy.com, uh, yeah. lowercase, uh, just to avoid confusion. If you pull it up, you'll see a lowercase Pablo Roy. You're there. Um, has three very three or four very easy to click on boxes, which open up to a lot of stuff, which was yeah, good. T- today I was looking, I was like, oh damn, I got to update it. I, I didn't put the wasabi study. That was literally what I said. Right, there. right. It's and I was trying to do it before I came. I was like, I'll just do it later. <laughs> it's in there. I got to it. Maybe I got to it a different way. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know what search engine I used or why, or if it was the same on the phone elsewhere, but uh, was two clicks to, to Spotify or one even um, for the one of the groups that you work with. So that was easy. Uh, but if it's not up to date, then that's, thank you for letting me know. I'll wait till it's updated, but good, good website. Um, and in it, you have something that I thought was a great starting place, return of the mackerel, uh, which sort of showed footage, mixed footage to me of Bangkok and a street in Miami possibly, or elsewhere. And then you mentioned the 305. So, uh, that, that to me, I've lived in Miami. I lived in, uh, sunny Isles, And so I attribute that with. Southern Florida's area code. That's right. All right. And so you were a Southern Florida boy. Uh, and I, I'm sorry if that has connotations here. Person <laughs> from Southern Florida. <laughs> Back up here. Uh, 
what's Southern Florida? What's that all about? Uh, could you orient us if people aren't from uh, the United States listening? So, well, firstly, that the return of the macro, that's actually just everywhere like I've been. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad I made that video because... <laughs> Me too. Eventually, the hard drive I had all that footage from, like, fucking died, man. Mm. Like, yeah, so that's literally like the last vestiges of a lot of the... the places i've been to and and so that was that but definitely there's footage from here and anchor watt so let me yeah. let me do some reverse engineering so i can get it then if it's that meaningful so i th thought i saw anchor watt mm -hmm. thought i saw a, Ch a china location mm, there is i think a hong kong yeah oh, okay hong kong. okay sorry folks um, in china hong kong uh there's definitely bangkok <clears throat> definitely outside of bangkok yes yeah um well actually that's probably like those like rural Parts, that's yeah. in, the, in Aceh, Indonesia. Oh, there you go. So, yeah. right, which has another connection through other things. So, well, so that is representative. So, I, I just saw what I wanted to see, which was Florida oh, streets. That's, and, that's the point of yeah. art, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So, um, so, so, yeah, return of the mackerel is more than that, just that showing you everything. So, lucky yeah, piece yeah, you had yeah. there. But I, I did see the Florida. So, Southern Florida to you was, was home f from birth? From birth yep. till I left, basically. Which um, was around when, so we can book in this. I left, at, um, let's see. 2015? 2007. Oh, 2007. nice. 2007. Okay. I left Miami. Yeah. Um, I moved to Orlando. It's not that far. <laughs> um, but a big difference. Sure, for sure. 100%. Uh, so you um, said Atlanta, right? Um, Orlando. Orlando. Oh, okay. Yeah, even, yeah, right. even stranger difference, right? It's like two metropolitan areas in a different universe that's <laughs> right i mean orlando right well literally like a culture shock the first time i experienced culture shock is in orlando because it's like oh firstly i was i mean it's college setting so it's a microcosm yeah. like in college settings it's like sort of like a random sample of a region right mm -hmm. um so it's like oh this is america right yeah, yeah. miami is not like the typical picture of america right yeah yeah, let's do cliches, right? Uh, Miami is the, uh, uh, the the blank of America, and Orlando is the America of Florida, right? So it's like, <laughs> right? so yeah, like that's what it is. So, um, but it, so it's not that far, but it sort of was yeah. a big deal. Yeah, it did, was that for schooling? Did you get arrested and incarcerated? Did your parents <laughs> kick you out? What was the the nature for the move? <laughs> yeah, I went to school. <laughs> okay, or I'm just you know could have been. Yeah. Um, fleeing in the dead of night went to school yep. yeah yeah uh, regular thing you graduate from high school go to college yeah yeah, yeah. okay and so um uh you know I, I get whimsical about the places i've lived in the past and sometimes um uh, um there's different imagery is evoked or is evocative when i go back even uh uh i had the fortune to go back to miami in the last couple of years after having lived there many years ago uh, still love it. Always loved it. Always had a, a cool feeling to it in America. Uh, you a fan of Miami, or is that the area you lived in, or was it lower than yeah, that? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm. Uh, so basically, you have the Miami Dade County, of course, mm -hmm. Southern big. Florida, and the United States East Coast. Mm, yeah. Exactly. So the, 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 when you look at the little dangly part of, uh, like, okay, this is Florida. This is the Panhandle. You like, right? Alabama's that way. Yes. Here's Miami, somewhere around here, mm. um, and it's well it's miami dade county right so it's actually really big if you're going from the northernmost part of miami to um the southernmost part it's like a 50 to 90 like 90 minute mm. thing right um as a county so that's a big deal for yeah. us in america to have that breadth of a county right mm. yeah so i was born at the southern part right so that's an area mm. you'll call like there's south miami there's um i, I guess you can coral gables uh, even further south from mm. from that like closer to homestead right okay like, right so i'm just north of homestead right um what's the city if we can ask uh it's kendall kendall yeah kendall there kendall florida Shout kendall, out. 152nd street uh 137th avenue that corner yeah. of kendall it's, it's also like yeah basically kendall and then if you go southern a little more southern from kendall you'll get to color ridge and then you little a little more so then you'll get to like homestead eventually yeah and then to the everglades right boy i mean uh i guess it's hard for me as an uh, adult american to disassociate the words homestead with 
out thinking of the hurricane in the mm. early 2000s, was it? Yep. Uh, well, the big, big one yeah, is yeah. Andrew, yeah, Hurricane yeah. Andrew. What year was that again? That was 1992. 92, Jesus. Oof, I'm off by a long shot. Yeah, yeah right. Um, right. And so you that was obviously uh, not something you experienced? Well, yo, that was probably... I would say one of my like first memories. Yeah, is it? Like probably one of my first three to five memories is the mm. like holy shit, there's a tree on the house. Like right. oh damn, like, on your house. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it was um, it fell on. It was like a duplex. We yeah, lived, yeah. We lived on uh, my mom and my brothers and sister, and my uncle lived on one side, and uh, uh, my cousins and my aunt lived on the other side so a duplex not like here in a building it's like uh it's a housing unit that's conjoined basically right, right, right. um and that's where we live yeah so yeah. like it was a uh that's one of my first memories is like being in the bathroom all night but like i slept through it but i just remember being in the bathroom and then the next morning like oh shit the tree oh damn yeah that was crazy yeah was the house shaking and the whole works or do you like or, or I, do you romanticize this or nah, nah, like have it, nightmares I, I i slept through it mostly mm. so it was just like being in the bathroom okay we're gonna sleep here and then the next morning like oh damn like there's uh, a mess did you have to leave after that no we, we stayed in the crib did you have power i don't remember right and kid, was, was, kid was running around was throwing cool, stuff yeah. yeah playing in the fall over trees in the house <laughs> everyone else freaking out yeah. yeah okay well good well i mean sorry to bring that back up but um uh, that's that was a big deal in america still is um and that that uh, hurricane alley thing is down south there but super tropical um same way thailand is tropical or different to you well i always tell people that thailand is basically the same just like i don't know like five to ten degrees hotter and more humid yeah um uh yeah but typically the same it's hotter here for sure yeah. but because like for example at this time of year it's january um so it's probably really cool like for me it'd be cold like uh 40 degrees fahrenheit no, no 50 50 to 60 degrees fahrenheit is cold in miami yeah right? for sure so around right. that time it's this time of year it's that's how it, yeah, anything that can kill an orange is bad weather. <laughs> it stops commerce, right? Everything else we can handle. Right, so interesting. So you're down there, and um, are you a water dude? Like, is 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 that part of the daily routine? And I'm not saying surfing on the beach, but like, you nah, know, like yeah. uh, the beach is far from my crib. Like, yeah. it's like a 40 minute drive. Like, we used to go there when I was in high school. We skip school, go to the beach type thing. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it would be a long drive. Yeah. Like it, and you wouldn't go to surf. You'd maybe go to cook out and eat and hang out. Or Yeah, we'd like drink. <laughs> yeah, drink, drink and drink smoke or whatever. Yeah, okay. yeah, just get away and it's a good open spot. And it's, it's not some cement corner at the 7-Eleven or whatever. It's Yeah, I get that. I mean, it's a good runaway. And the keys were the keys exotic and far away, or did the Florida keys, which are the little islands on the bottom Yo, of that little thing you talked about? Um, I hadn't been to the keys literally until maybe like five years ago. Yeah. Um, so funny enough, yes, it was always like a far thing. Yeah. Um, You're yeah. not welcome far, or it's just too expensive. It's none no, of your just business, far son. as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. just really far. We never like. It's funny why we never went. We all for like the vacation stuff. We always went north. Cheaper yeah like orlando stuff yeah, yeah. Like maybe not even honestly yeah like, same same probably probably not even cheaper yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mean i i spent that in my childhood some of my earlier memories are either driving from wisconsin to the florida keys to isla Mirada, isla Mirada, however you say it um and back or flying for the first time and taking all the soap from the united airlines plane and putting it in my bag and stuff you know just but very clear memories and then learning how to snorkel and scuba dive with my dad down there so, man. but those were magical islands still are but a lot's changed but uh, they were far away and remote to me and and infrequently visited but when i did i loved them and so i i attached a lot of significance with the florida keys because it meant i wasn't in school you know it was like nice. vacation yeah, the floor and honestly the florida keys like when i visited the first time it was like a, it was just a new year's thing where i went key west uh, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, friends like yo we're gonna go 
I got this homie and we're going to go to the Keys. You want to come? I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just there like, yo, I can't believe I've never been here. It was like, uh, it's like a bohemian place. It's yeah. a very bohemian. Like, um, there's a lot of homelessness there, but you, I didn't even know it. Like, like until reflection, I was like, oh, yo, we just like chill with the, like, like we were, uh, everyone is so unattached to like their status or whatever that like yeah. up, upon departing we're like yo they were they were homeless oh shit like yeah because we met them on the beach and it was like yo they lived there right and we didn't even realize until the end in key west yeah, yeah. um yeah. so it's a really bohemian place where people go to like escape it's sort of like when people go to Copenhagen type thing you know what i mean or even start here and end up there yeah yeah, yeah like, <laughs> so it's that type of place and i was yeah. like yo i didn't know this place was like right here like super yeah. close to home yeah yeah that's what i was wondering i i thought you, you know the the coin toss could have been yeah well, i went down there and you know when i was 12 i spent a week on the beach in key west and my parents you know put me in boarding school because <laughs> you, know, you were drawn to the beach and the lifestyle or something but <laughs> <laughs> right? nah, yeah the, be well, the beach was always too far like so yeah. did you say darn why didn't i find this sooner because i'd have come down here every week or were you more pragmatic like it's still too far i you know nah, it's, it's it just, five tanks of gas i it's mean the seven world's hours. big man like yeah, yeah, like yeah. like uh yeah like okay i didn't go to key west but shit i've been everywhere yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like yeah cool so uh sort of regular kindergarten grade school high school upbringing yeah, uh to, pablo the fist fighter or no no nah, i was a yeah. uh, like probably shy kid um I'm the youngest of four, so, mm. uh, well, youngest of four in uh, middle of eight. Right. So, uh, but with, uh, I grew up with my mom and my brothers and my sister, so I was the youngest side of the bunch. Uh, so very insulated, super insulated. Yeah, um, yeah just uh, school, went to elementary school. In, in the, It was like right around the corner from that same crib. Um, That's good. I mean, the chances are running down the wrong alley or eliminated if you're close yeah, yeah like you, it, you you wouldn't walk to it but you knew how to walk if you right right, to, right you right. know what i mean yeah, yeah. um yeah this is a cuban is a little havana right so everyone's cuban everybody's cuban there's like <laughs> a lot of uh like you know you have your recitals your the the, the little kids get on the stage and, and do like a music or something yeah, sure sure it would be like Guantanamera. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I knew that song since I was a jit, like really, really small. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's what it is, Little Havana. Yeah. Um, of Kendall? No, that was before I moved to Kendall. Okay. That, that was um, so, that, like, like early, like I said, early, early memories, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from when I was, um, I was because well, first I was born here. But my family was living in Chile at the time. Yeah, born here, not Thailand. Born. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm placing myself in Miami. I was born in Miami. Okay. Um, but at the time, so I, Little Havana, Miami. So you, the hardcore no. Little Havana. So um, I was born in South Miami Hospital. Okay. I was then at but but my family was living in Iquique, Chile at the time. So I left wow. basically. So the first year of my life, I was there. But then we came back the uh -huh. next year. And that's when my first memory started. So I don't remember none of that. Yeah. Um, but when we came back, we were living uh, where my aunt and my uncle lived in the Havana. So we stayed there Miami. Um, in Miami. Yeah. Mm. Um, for until I would say I was. Let me go from like kindergarten to second grade, maybe, uh -huh. maybe second grade. And then. I remember then we moved to Kendall when I was in, yeah, second grade, second uh, grade. Um, and then I stayed there till I left, till I grew up or, well, yeah, till I left to college. Yeah. Um, so how yeah. was that Miami interlude? Was it, was it, uh, looking for water running on the river or straying on the streets, uh, running home cause you're scared and it's big and there's eight lanes of traffic in the main street or. Uh, no, nah, I was like, my neighborhood was pretty safe. Like mm. little Havana, it was pretty safe. You yeah. knew all your neighbors, um, right? Like literally everyone down the street, you knew everybody. Um, but actually, actually we did live next to it, uh, in little Havana, our neighbor, we, we didn't know, but like his dad was a drug dealer. Okay. Um, so it, it was, he was like the friend that my brothers would 
would play with. Yeah. Uh, and then one day, like the like some government uh, agency came and raided his crib, and yeah. everyone was like, "Oh shit!" Like, right. Well, um, but still safe. Like we didn't. It, yeah, yeah. it, it wasn't like. You didn't know that. Nobody knew that. Yeah, and I don't mean to characterize South Miami as dangerous or not. It's just uh, it, when you're a kid, sometimes the uh, mean streets are on the way to school, and you just, you know, you walk through an area and you get beat up, and it's a daily lot in life the parents never know about because you don't tell them, right? But he yeah. seems like a pretty decent start. Was it a uh, public school or a private school? Or was it Christian, Catholic, or was it? It was a p- public, yeah. It was called, my my elementary school was called Auburndale. Auburndale mm. okay. Elementary School. Doesn't sound particularly wed to the community, so just yeah, like public like, school. Well, all the, yeah, all the schools are named by, like, Herbert or yeah, something right, like right. that. <laughs> Some dude, right, from the 18. <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah. Right, no f- association whatsoever with the building because it's named after. A- I, actually, I, I think I went to three elementary schools. And I, I went because I'm like uh, so. The first one, second grade, was that one, and then Her- what is it? Gloria Her- is it Herbert. I'm that's when, like you had uh, Auburndale, Gloria, yeah. Gloria Floyd, and R uh, R Moulton. It's yeah. uh, like these weird names. Um, Rich Miami folk yeah, yeah some someone who donated money to yeah. the city council or some shit. well god bless them i hope they're doing well still um <laughs> so you you make the the trek uh uh to somewhere you may or may not remember in chile come back uh do a stint in miami uh in in little havana uh which has a a, a robust and vibrant nightlife a music community food community pretty awesome if you can put your fingers on it uh generally mm. right um and are you speaking uh english all the time or two languages or five languages that we don't know about or you you speak spanish Mm. uh, Mm. especially like um shopping everywhere yeah actually like everyone in miami assumes you speak spanish Mm. for the most part so like you're at the gas station they're they're gonna speak to you in spanish um but uh yeah in the house with my um yeah, I was just reflecting on this because with my mom, I speak English. Mm. But with literally Always, I, never Spanish, ever? Yeah, we literally only speak English. But with everyone else, uh, my aunts, my grandma, everyone, is it's uh, in Spanish. And is your mom, uh, 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 is her first language English? No. So she elects to speak in her second language with her youngest son of the four, not of the eight uh well with all of us yeah, yeah okay she, so with huh. all of us uh she speaks uh, english yeah. have you asked her why no I, th- I think never i never even thought of it until like last week or something recently like yeah, yeah. We, we never speak spanish so in the home we didn't speak spanish but we all spoke spanish oh you know why because like my uncle so my uncle lived in the house too so with my uncle we speak we speak spanish okay yes so uh, tío nene was his name. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, like uh he only speaks to us in spanish Okay. Yeah. So she saw he's doing that work. Yeah, they'll do yeah, the yeah, English. Yeah. They'll be bilingual. They'll have a better chance of getting ahead. They can get a job. They can be president if they speak English. Well, and, and but also you're put in classes, Spanish class. Right. Like right. you in Miami, the public school system, you have uh, Spanish for Spanish speakers, mm. and then you have Spanish for like second language. Huh. That's a second language. So you're you're we're taught like in the same way in an English class. Interesting. That you're taught like certain literature, like. I remember Don Quixote. Like we read that <laughs> shit in, in like seventh or eighth grade. Okay, that's age appropriate. Big up, Mr. Sanchez. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that makes sense. You know, I mean, if they if you had a reading in the second grade, it wouldn't make any sense. But <laughs> okay, so good. So you're reading Cervantes at the age appropriate time with yeah, your comments. Yeah, it was like it was like the textbook version. You know, it was yeah, condensed yeah. and illustrations, yeah. whatever. This guy running. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't heard any Cervantes imagery in any of your songs. Or yeah, it's not particularly like, <laughs> right. impactful. It didn't know? stick <laughs> in. <laughs> but all that is just, it, it reinforced the language, though. Like, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, I, I can speak Spanish very fluently, but I'll stumble still because I don't use it here ever, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny. If I, th- if I think of the way you recount the lyrics of Tongue Slip, I would say that is the classic Cervantes character in Tongue Slip. Mm. If you read it one way, if you read it the other, it's 
classic Godfather characters, you better learn how to handle these meetings when you're wasted <laughs> because you can, you can drop the ball, you know? And so, you know, it's hard to figure out when, you know, source and if originality and whatever, but, you know, I, I talked about this with you earlier is, is, um, it's, it's interesting trying to piece together the threads of your current work versus your old stuff. Uh, cause it's getting a lot more layered and, and sophisticated, but also streamlined for me. So, um, I'm just asking about this to see, you know, if you said you were the French literature major in third grade, I'd say, okay, I'm not seeing any of that <laughs> either, but, uh, you know what I mean? So you, you had traditional, uh, Miami, uh, education, then you go back to Kendall and you're there and more, more easy going schooling system there, easier to get to, or you, the, the fence is still 40 feet high and people, um, throwing stuff at each other inside the fence, sports style. Right? No, nah, we never had like, um, <clears throat> like fights in school was mm -hmm. never a common thing. Mm -hmm. I did. I was in, I was in a regular school. So yeah. Just curious. Like, um, calm Southern sort of, you would hear like, Oh, cause, um, Oh, this is the school where all the fights happen. Yeah. Thing, right. Yeah. Like, uh, or this is like every school had a stereotype, whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for the most part, like every, any school I ever went to is very easy going. It would be usually like a magnet program stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like my mom made sure I was like, mm. like, um, by the fourth child, she knew how to work the education system to yeah. place me for opportunities. Yeah. And I guess how backwards, uh, that sounds my questions. And it's not that you're from Miami and you know, there's some class judgment being made by this. It was more like, was school a place where beatings were handed out? Nah, nah, no, that's okay. what I'm saying. Like we yeah. never, it was never like for me, I fucking love school, yo. Like, um, huh. like, uh, all right. Well, for me going to school was always the cool, like I couldn't wait. Um, huh. like I remember being in middle school and like, yo, this shit is like Hogwarts. Like, mm. like I felt that, um and that uh, you'd have to explain what that means when you say that to me like hogwarts yeah, you, you like, got in a broom and flew around school nah, or like what? yo like i have te like um you have teachers who are consistent uh, you know? i see like um who like uh, like i said mr sanchez yeah, yeah. for three years there he was my go. teacher right yeah. so it's like the that's what i mean like in hogwarts is like you have these teachers mm. who are fixtures yeah um so yeah like F fixtures to a kid do you think they were 30 year teachers or was it just because they were fixture for you during that you're passing through that intermediate stage? Maybe a little both. Mm. Right. Mm. Like, um, I got the sense that some teachers, they were like, they've been here for like, they're the OG teachers. Right. Um, Life first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them were like, like I've been, I've been a teacher, right? Like, uh, the 20, I've like in, 20 something year old teacher right mm. so like I, some of them were definitely in that stage of life also yeah. um but uh yeah i always felt that like for me school it was usually a safe place nice um there was never really fights nice um everyone for the most part got along um yeah but it was again it was like it was uh how do you say these are we'd have to apply to be in these schools. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, so they're selective. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it was, uh, I imagine that's, there's a certain filtration. Yeah. And I'm not even uh, trying to highlight that, I guess, you know, it's the walk there and the walk back and, and liking it, but you said you liked it. And so were yeah. you, did you have a tendency towards something or did you just gym class was as awesome as the Cervantes was as awesome as math or, or were you starting to see a road it, early? It would depend on the teacher. Oh, there straight, it is. Up, straight up it would really depend on the teacher huh. like um like for example one in my eighth grade year my science teacher was a teacher mm. who taught my oldest brother like fucking like yeah, way yeah. before right so that was cool um was it cool because of the content oh, I'm well sorry. I cut you it was cool because firstly i couldn't be caught slipping on the content right yeah um but also the how do you say like the feeling of village right like like yeah, yeah. like you know you have these people who okay it's not my mom or my uncle or whatever but like she'll hold me down if i need it yeah, right yeah. um so things like that like like oh shit like maybe i don't know like my mom she's um she had to stay late for work and i'm waiting right outside of school and she would come and like oh yeah i'll just take you to the crib yeah, come yeah. through right nice. that type of thing yeah 
Yeah. So that's, I mean, so you, you, in that instance with that teacher, you felt sort of an obligation to, to carry mm. the flag for the family and for the community so and for the. Yeah. And, and I guess there for, that's for accountability, but then you'd have other teachers, my science teacher before that. Has, uh, so that was Ms. Briarton, right? Uh, before they had Mr. Mike, yeah. who he was just like funny dude. And he right. made the content like dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was science. Yeah, science. Yeah. So, um, so lighting stuff on fire and popping balloons and helium and talking squeaky voice and yeah. stuff that was just, oh, this is, I'm learning the well, concept. Well, he was more of a, like, um, like a comedian, like, in a way, like, uh, kind of, I guess this, I don't know if this sounds bad, but he would poke <laughs> fun. He would, sure. he would, like, poke fun, but in a good spirit. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. like, hey, uh, so you would let your guard down. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then, so, but yeah, then I had really dope. Um, oh, my English teachers were always fucking dope. Huh. My English, every single English teacher <laughs> is fucking dope. So let me see if I can break down what an English teacher did. I guess I had English from grades one through eight. So I guess, I'm just assuming I did. I can't remember anymore. I could go look at my report card, but um, I guess they taught us grammar and sentence structure and how to write and then probably creative writing or, or something beyond C spot run. Right. So I assume you go from my name is Joe, my name is Roman, whatever to C spot run to, you know, the yellow flowers had dew on them in the morning to more expressive things. And probably by eighth grade, you've, that's been the trajectory of English class, right? Yeah. And the, again, lucky, because this isn't everyone's situation where you have the same teacher every right, year, right, right, right? right? So I was lucky to have, uh, in middle school, the same teacher nice. every year. Uh. Um, again, so that provides accountability. Um, but, yeah, like, I, again, I felt like she was a parent sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Track and progress. I probably <laughs> slipped once and called her mom, like, you know what I mean? And everybody laughed. Uh. Um but uh, yeah, like I think they would uh, they would give you situations to allow you to be creative. Mm. Um, so it was wait, it wasn't English language arts, right? Right, right. That's arts. what you call it in Miami, <coughs> language arts. Yeah, sure. I'm sure, and I'm sure it's probably the same stuff. I'm, I'm not trying to say my education was better or different, worse than yours, but it's just I'm trying to get some common ground here. Mm. And so, were you? Was this a magnet thing, and were you in a? I don't know what they call them now, but were you in some advanced studies thing the whole ride through and were you writing haikus in third grade and <laughs> reciting them and <laughs> stuff? Or? No, it was, it was, uh, so yeah, it would be like, um, it's a magnet programs. So like, uh, you, you'd apply, like, I remember, like I said, I went, I went to three different schools as I moved when I was really young. Um, but I remember the first time I applied, right. My mom's like, yo, make this application choose which program you want ah interesting um it's a lot of responsibility yeah but it, it, so you had to choose like oh what is it gonna be a dance or right. theater or uh music I, yeah. I remember i chose photography i was like oh shit photography i'm down um so that was my first magnet program I was fifth grade right so wow. i changed schools um and then that's it that was the that was the the game you you Every school you apply for a different magnet program, um, and mag a magnet program is based. It's a mag. It's supposed to draw students. So mm. what they do is they um, they place uh, a a type of program meant to draw like smart, well performing students um, to basically kind of raise the test scores of the school yeah. in a certain area, right? Uh, so like. It, it could be not necessarily failing schools, but just like, yo, like we're trying to yeah. spread like basic. And I feel like it works where it's like you're, um, you're, you're, how do you say? Rising tides lift all boats. Something like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm being yeah, a wise yeah, guy. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, a yeah. really nice way to put that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and so you basically school was always uh, uh, like far right? right it was always right. far i remember you have to wake up like at 5 a.m uh, sure. to get the bus to get there by seven it's rural florida even though it's a city right it's still spread out yeah, suburban weird hundred thousand kids right expansive suburb yeah. thing you know what i mean yeah 
schools are 40 miles apart yeah like uh, uh, um so but anyways um all that just to say is um like in these programs the it's very curated the teachers are, are i'm sure are very selected right mm -hmm. so i definitely benefited from all of that um and in some of these schools um yeah, I had the same in high school. I had the same teacher three out of the four years. Nice. Um, and then I, I was also in an engineering program, right? That was my high school thing. I was like the math and I science. Had, I, yeah, I had to wear like a gray shirt. It was the uniform for the engineers. <laughs> Who chose that? Uh, I don't know, but that was the the deal, right? Um, but the teacher, Mr. Torres, I had him all four years, right? Nice. Or maybe three out of the four. So, but what was his curriculum for you as an engineer teacher? um like math algebra calculus uh, no like we took all of that on the side mm. like you um i wasn't super advanced in math but like you like everyone was taking like pre-calculus um oh, okay so like advanced like mathematics physics and yeah. shit like you know what i mean yeah. um he mr torres would have us design things nice it's like yo like um here's a challenge or here's what we're learning we we learn how to use cad software like um and yeah, then understood we, yo we out in 2000 and fucking six 2005 2006 i was 3d printing shit huh. you feel me like yeah, yeah. like mm. that's mr torres he would have us design it and <clears throat> then like 3d print that shit sounds early sounds yeah. sounds leading edge right mm. like teaching something that's not happening around the world yet yeah and the reason i was trying to be in that is because my every one of my older siblings they were in a program, an engineering program that was uh. fucking cool where um, they would have to build a robot to compete. And they would go every year on a trip to Disney and my mom would be a chaperone nice. and she would uh, bring me. Um, and it was a ro the robot competition. Yeah, uh, where they smash each other that one or no no yeah. it was it would the, every year would be a different task that you mm. have to design the robot for so i was like yo in fourth grade i was like yo i'm gonna be a fucking engineer dog <laughs> like that was me what was your year's task um no i wasn't in it i wasn't oh in you didn't program. make it that far okay. no like because yeah. i didn't go th i didn't end up going to the same high school as uh, okay okay all right. sorry uh, sorry so this was the consolation this yeah, oh, yeah. here's the engineering program um, mr torres yeah yeah um and but still, Mr. Torres, he put us in competition, so, sort of like that. Like nice. where we would have to design things. Um, also, sec me. I don't know if you know what sec me is. It's like a science. It, you it's, again, you it's design shit. First. You test. Yeah. You test a, a egg drop container. Right, like right. You drop a container from three stories, and uh, does the egg survive? Type yeah, thing. Yeah. Like so, it's an engineering competition type thing. So, so yeah, basically a lot of mentorship. I think uh, I had like yeah. in, in every stage of school. Hmm. So, I mean, yay, right? Mm. Uh, you know, I want to say something stupid like the yay for the American education system. Maybe I would say Miami-Dade public schools are fucking dope. Like, real talk, <laughs> Miami-Dade public schools, big, big up, commercial. big up. <laughs> I don't know if they can publish that one, but that's the commercial. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I always felt like, yo, but that's um, obviously... Uh, Family, these, community. These are concentrated, well, right? They concentrate... The, yeah. very curated programs they concentrate the uh, best teachers yeah. and uh, they filter the students um yeah. yeah okay well cool so um any sports or athletics or extracurriculars how about a guitar piano drum set how about a how I about a theater, Pro tools? I used to theater. theater. Okay. As, as a kid it was theater uh south pacific or or uh, jesus christ superstar or what are we talking about <laughs> like yeah. whatever like shakespeare um, no, nah, it was like whatever the drama teacher production, she, she would decide, right? Like, uh, yeah. you did Bye Bye Birdie. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah so. Um, Bye Bye Birdie. What else did we do? I don't know if you know, Lil Abner. Sure. It's like a old, really old, like 19 not, some. Not so old, bro. <laughs> like, it's like a, it's like a thirties. Yeah. Yeah. Play. I get it. I get it. Um, let's see. Uh, and this was through a class or was this extracurricular? Like you do first, that night. First, it was extra. This is when yeah. I. This is how I like started to lean to art, right? Yeah, yeah. Is um, because I had a, uh, someone named Brenda, and she was. I just knew her. She was in mm. all of my English classes all the time, or in, in a math class, always like whatever. And we'd have classes similar all the time. Yeah. And she was like, "Yo, we need people to be in the fucking play that are uh, boys, so like you want to come and." and mm -hmm. audition 
I was like, nah. She's like, come on, man. Just like, I'm audition. I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll go audition. And so I did. And I got a part as a General Bull Moose. The, nice. The villain of the, of the play. And, and Lil Abner. Yeah. Okay. Um, General Bull Moose. So, so that's your first credited uh, part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you lose that when you lost all the videos? Uh, um, did you have any General Bull Moose footage? I'm sure someone has it. <sighs> Boy, someone has it. Calling Boy, all General Bull Moose. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be good to have. I'm super grateful for Brenda for that because uh that shit was very I feel like very impactful. Yeah. Um yeah, but and then I was like, yo, this was probably second to last year, junior year in high yeah, school, yeah. right? Like yeah. so like I'm like, oh damn, I could have been doing this. Damn. Yeah. But um, you also deploy the parachute because you know you're almost done and you're thinking God, if I don't try this stuff now, yeah, right? It's I, I understand what you're saying there. So but let, let's, let me ask you about Brenda. Did you do it because you liked her and wanted to be with Brenda, or was she a friend? No, she was a friend, and, and she was like, yo, we need help, man. Like, okay. we're trying to make a play. It's like. a call to arms. <laughs> so were you in the gray shirt from engineering class showing up for the audition for General Bullwinkle? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The, the drama, all the arts program kids were purple shirts. Right? Pur- right. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like... What what is this thing or what is this the girl who holds the thing up? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's literally like all the like there would be um, the, the business <laughs> business students would ah. be like in a blue shirt. And and, I'll kick your ass. And then you would have like people like <laughs> that want to do trades like like fixing cars and stuff. Uh, they yeah. would have a, a a green shirt like it was, it was, so. Actually, it was very <sighs> yeah weirdly <sir>. segregated <laughs> post Soviet Union. <laughs> You're a gray shirt. You have to go over yeah. that bathroom over there, son. Um, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, we would swap shirts sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. There, then it starts that way, right? Yeah. That's how <laughs> deceit and treason and all of these things start <laughs> with the shirt swap. It's funny. <laughs> it's but, um, the nature of politics. But yeah, basically it's that. Like you said, I was like, oh man, I could have been doing this. Um, and then the next year, my senior, I was like, yo, I'm going to take a class in this. Huh. So were you still gray shirt and you were still like um, applying to Orlando University to go up and do engineering and I'm going to get a, be a, a chemical engineer. I'm going I'm to do the work that. that. That was, yeah, I was trying mm-hmm. to be an aerospace engineer. Yeah, right. Oh, great. NASA, 24 that, Lauderdale. Okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah, I love like stuff. airplanes and shit, right? So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fucking design these shits. It's going to be dope. Um, I imagine that's a, a clarion call in Florida when you have a, a NASA space agency in state and you have all this Disney stuff that flying is sure. compelling, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. And, and I literally grew up almost next door to a to an airport, Tamiami Airport, right? right so it's like is. it's uh, like you have that and my house is like, right. I, could, I would walk, you could walk to it and you always see the planes flying. So that yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. They'd fly to the Keys and those little planes too so they wouldn't fly that high. So mm. you probably got a lot of... Saw a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's interesting, right? So it's, it's Brenda. Shout yeah. out to Brenda. I Yo, mean, Brenda, big up. Because honestly, like that nudged me in the best direction. Huh. And, and because, um, so senior year, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to, I'm going to do this. And you couldn't, if you're in it, like you're an engineering student, yeah, yeah. you had a set of classes, you write course. a course path or whatever. Curriculum, yeah. Um, but I'm like, nah, son, I'm like, I was like, yo, let me do both. Let me do instead of doing um, like PE and all the other other shit. Oh, yeah. Let me do both programs. They're like, no, you can't. And so they settled on just letting me take a drama class, like a one. Yeah. Hmm. What was it? Do you remember? Uh, um, drama. It was this drama. So uh, plays. Miss Q. Like uh, uh, so that was, Miss man again. Miss Q. Dope, men, dope mentorship. There you go. Because she would be like, yo, write the script. Yo, design these costumes, huh. right? Like she would be like, uh, just pushing you in uh, every yeah. direction. Like, you man. remember any of the performances you did that year, Miss Q, um, or any of the things, or any of the things, you know, the sh- things you designed, or you know? Yes. Um, firstly, again, like we would have to write scripts, right? So, like, I I remember, uh, it was a black. The class was a black box theater, hmm. so. The classroom that you were yeah. in was not rows of chairs that had little flip top desks. It exactly. was exactly like, so. It's cool to start with, like yeah, it was just all right. It's like the box. science lab, but this is now a black box. That's cool. Mm. That's a good start, right? Different. So, she basically, 
I remember doing this like kind of split screen. It was a play about two versions of the same, like I like guess two maybe parallel paths that could that aren't quite the same that could have happened or something. Uh-huh. This is it. This is like a script, and and so then you had to partner with people to act it out mm. their script, and they would act out yours, whatever. Oh, nice. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, um, challenging. Yeah, like musical numbers, you would have to like like uh, perform one, like pick a song, and and use the song to create a scene. What was yours? <sighs> if you can remember, it was, it was I think. Um, it was a song from Idlewild. Huh. The, uh, okay. What is it? It's Andre because th- Idlewild was like a music musical that uh, Outcast made. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- 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 it, it was like he's speaking to a, a woman and like, "Yo, you're fine." And so I haven't, I I don't remember the song. Okay, um, but you remember you remember the song, but you can't do the lyrics now. So. Yeah. Okay, so, like so it's, it's still it's, in your head. So like, yeah, it was like a scene. And, and were you embarrassed? Were you nervous? Did you throw up? Or was this like, this is so awesome and everyone's so tight in this group that this yeah, there's you, no judgment? You mm. never felt like you, everyone had to do it, right? So everyone was bought in. Yeah. Know, like <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean you're not fearful of performing. I never felt that fear, I guess, like um, of like, I guess the fear of the nervousness you feel, right? Oh shit, I'm here, like in the yeah. moment, right? Like, oh, like ooh, right? Game, game, <laughs> game time, right? But the diving into it, I never feared. Like, yeah. All right, let's go. All right. Um, Where does that come from? You think at that point? Again, I I have I feel like. I have I have so many siblings and grew up around a lot of family that I just feel insulated, right? Yeah, or um, protected or safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that's really where it comes from. Where it's like, uh, like, yeah, like I feel like I'm gonna be good, right? Like yeah. I, I got a squad. Like, uh, was the dinner table full of storytelling and narratives, or was it quiet and you eat and you get out of there and go study in the room, put um, on the headphones? Yeah, I think it was somewhere along those lines, right? Yeah. Like we eat together, just eat, eat, eat. Everyone's like trying to go back to watch their thing. Or, okay, you know, it was like Pablo the tonight. We'd like you to recite the Lord's nah, Prayer in you know nineteen nah, twenties fashion. It was like my mom, <laughs> like like my mom was had a lot on her hands. And yeah, yeah. She hated cooking. Like she hated because like now she's retired from cooking. Right, right, like right, We're right. all growing up. Like she, yeah. like because it was she was doing so much. So it was like yeah. a, it's like a. It's like a work, movie, right? Work like, all day, cook at night, just working um, hard. So it was like, all right, come eat, hurry up. I don't want to yeah, you be eat that shit. Like. <laughs> so a little a business efficiency to dinner. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> and no, no, no judge. We're just asking because, you know, it's just funny that there wasn't, you know, y'all weren't singing show tunes on the weekends to sort of practice for the big nah. day. All right. So then you're, you're working your way through high school and there's a decision to, to break from engineering at some point. Was it, was it in high school or it after was school? literally like day one of college. I was like, yeah. Oh shit, I got to do all this. Nah, son, I'm yeah. not, I'm not taking so you, all these Orlando. Things. So you move, yeah. pack up, move possessions, or do you go back and forth or do you show up with one pair of underwear and other people have furniture or um, what's the deal? I went to college. So I, I just packed up like, um, what you, you take, like your clothes yeah. your yeah you don't have much or you're yeah. 18 years old you don't yeah, have yeah. shit like you just take and your clothes tough to say goodbye to ma because you're young i cried yeah, i yeah. cried for yeah. sure my mom cried like yeah. it was uh yeah but um yeah we still insulated because uh my my roommate was my best friend uh, right so from so the neighborhood from from school my, yeah, like, yeah. that i knew all year everywhere. did you drive up together or did you drive separately and meet we might have drove separate yeah 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 Okay, but you're there and it's still, you're on your own and you got like $20 in your pocket and you're setting out on the mission, right? It's just, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dorm so room or apartment or dorm how Dorm room. It? Dorm room. We shared a room. Uh, very, like, yeah, yeah. probably the size of like. Half of this. Yeah. 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 Um, Understood. Bed on one side, the other bed, and then you, you shared the bathroom with the other room on the hall. Or That's nice. My, mine was a bathroom down the hall, so if you. Yeah, actually, that was I was scared. Of, I was I was like, oh, yo, like, I was scared of that. Yeah, yeah, hold it, hold it. Um, um, all right, and so day two, you're you're down at the uh, uh, office of administration, changing majors because you want to go into something else, or did you quit? Um, yeah, I, th- I think 
you just, it was easy to switch majors, yeah, right? Okay. You just like, uh, you, but, and at this time, it's all online, right? Like yeah, you yeah. just, uh, or like maybe you have to take get <laughs> someone's signature in person, but uh, yeah. you register something online. I was just like, yo, I, I didn't know what I wanted to change into. I, I was theater, right? I was like, oh, I'm, just, I'm. At first, I was like, oh, I'll just. Uh, um, double major in engineering yeah, yeah. and theater. <laughs> yeah, that was my plan. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, I'm just gonna do theater." And then my brother's like, "Don't be a fucking idiot. Don't don't major in theater." <laughs> and okay. I was like, what? "Thanks, bro." He's like, "Yeah, you got to do like finance." Um, I was like, "Nah, I'm not trying to do finance. Whatever." I settled on marketing. That's what I ended up studying in, in college. Yeah, all the way through. Um, for Fini- the most part, yeah. You all the finished way through. that. I tried to do a. Um, a minor yeah i try to do that in middle east studies but i missed it by one class all right that was your sufi mysticism (laughs) okay all right right, so uh you come out of college and you're ready to do marketing then i guess or not so all right when i was um that last year in college um the plan was Mm -hmm. um what was i doing when i was in, in, in college i was working as a teacher um i worked at a what, what i don't know what you, you'd call it a um it, it was i worked at a church but the church was receiving funding from the state mm. to run this program which was like anti-delinquency like it would take the students that get suspended yeah, yeah. from school and give them an instead of like yeah get the fuck out of school and yeah, yeah. and into the wild while your parents aren't home right yeah like, it would have them come to our, to where we, we were. Right. And would it say when you showed in, uh, come on in, we're going to teach you. And by the way, God love you. And uh, no, well, praise thank the Lord. No, there wasn't mm. any like, um, religious aspect to it, but we were in a church, right? So the class was literally in the sanctuary of, of a Baptist church. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Jesus everywhere. Like <laughs> <laughs> soft power. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um do you think that moderated behavior of these people who came like no nah, not at all um uh some of these kids were like were in bad situations you know what yeah. i mean like um so yeah the you it would be the range k through 12 and how did you get skilled in teaching just here's the book teach this and make sure everyone shows up um well sign them in yeah you kind of firstly i had uh Alex, who is uh, one of my best friends, who actually lives here now, okay. he he is a teacher, like a real one, like mm, right, like yeah. um, and um, he was I I would work with him literally alongside him. I see. Um, so yeah, basically <laughs> follow his lead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so that's what I was doing for work, and at the time, let's see, after I graduate. I was supposed to come here because my brothers already lived here. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I got a DUI. Understood. Um, and uh, so that that uh, you can't leave. You know, after you, you you're on probation, you can't leave the country. Um, For real? Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> so. Are you? I mean, can, are you an American citizen? Once you're a criminal, it doesn't matter. Wow. Yeah. Like, well, so yeah, like I got arrested. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. It's, it's so, it's, it's, so then basically you're stuck um, for a period of time, three years or one year, or just 10 years or five years or something. Yeah, statutory and, thing. And you know what my plan was? Um, after I graduated, I, I studied marketing, but I was like, oh, yo, I'm gonna go to law school. Hey. Yeah. I was like, yo, like, cause I, I, I have a weird interest in like, like, legal agreements right mm-hmm. like um so yeah like i was like okay i'm gonna go to law school um because it's dope it's literally like laws right like you it's uh it dictates between entities to behavior the behavior i was like I, um and again everyone everyone in my family my dad all my brother business 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 uh, yeah um so i'm like oh yeah that's some shit i'm a writer like i like to write you know yeah. what i mean like yeah <laughs> um so so yeah, and during that period, I was studying for LSAT. Um, right. So I was living in Orlando, still working in that spot, um, studying for LSAT, LSAT, and then um, 
that was the plan. Okay, I'm gonna study for the LSAT, then move to Bangkok, yeah, and then eventually go to law school later. You know what I mean? Okay, so um, just a little break to come over. So deferred yeah. dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so then that's it. I I, I moved to Miami for like three months. Um, I took the LSAT and then I moved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Officially on the road at that point. Mm. Okay. And so when does the, um, so, um, that's 2006, seven, eight around. Um, no, now we're talking about 2012. I lived in Orlando for like five years. Okay. 2012. So 2013, yeah. November, 2012, I moved here. So you get here and, uh, um, is the goal to perform or do artwork now? No. Well, um, so the reason I moved here is because my, my brother, uh, they started an airline. What? Um, yeah, they, okay. they, uh, started an airline. And so that was like, that was my plan. Move to Bangkok and fucking come work. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's what for the probably first until COVID that was, that was the primary focus. Huh? Um, Pablo, Pablo Roy airline. Yeah. And okay. that uh, awesome. Just everything about that experience huh. is fucking crazy <laughs> um but yeah like essentially i moved here and that's it we had um we had an airplane and the goal was how do we get this flying um and that's it like what we would do like charters huh. um and basically try and keep the, the thing to fly like pablo i'm going to phuket i need a uh, flight on a monday got three people four sets of golf clubs no it's more <laughs> like um yo we we have we we we're from some part of china we create these tour packages and we have these people we need to ship like 300 people a week twice or maybe three times a week between here and phuket between let's say um, huh. Shenyang right, and, right. and Phuket, um, that that's what that's what the wow. So international travel mm -hmm. that sounds like about as hard a thing as there is, uh, other than interplanetary travel. Right? Like, yes, right. Um, <laughs> like right. So there, I have a. This is yo. This is literally a movie, like or uh, maybe a, a multi saga fucking TV Netflix show. Netflix because five series. Basically, um, just impossible. Every day, I'm like, "Yo, I'm twenty. I'm like twenty three, mm. twenty four, twenty five at this time." And I'm like, "Yo, the, the things. This meeting, I shouldn't be here. Right. This meeting. Um, so, so let me ask you this: Is this uh, that how it gets done? That's how you handle business. Negotiate the dinner. Negotiate the drink. Negotiate." Drink while blank in your face, negotiating <laughs> Shanghai, negotiating Beijing. So that's that's it. Um, yeah. I was wondering where that came up because I thought, okay, you know, is this some dot com? <laughs> What's going on here? So you were. <laughs> so there's this is a song I'm referring to off your your most recent album, uh, Wasabi I'm Bites: sweet. Tales of the City, which is to me is is right up there in terms of complexity and and quality as as anything i've heard re recently but there's a song called song called ton slip you just said that that has a great sequence that reads how i just read it and i thought <clears throat> what why, why the hell is this this is a very adult breakdown of business interaction in a very excellent musical way <laughs> it's just, you know it's the guy's getting drunk with some clients he doesn't know and is trying to keep sober and not crash the plane <laughs> physically right like i gotta stay awake for this but it was just it's a very rhythmic cool moment in the song i thought yeah you know we've all been there you know this is universal this message here is just hold your act together and it doesn't have to be in beijing or shanghai like you mm -hmm. said but i i was listening to it, i thought what a great song and what a great like okay I will be onboarding you here at, uh, you know, Elon Musk headquarters. Uh, part of your onboarding package is going to read tongue slip and analyze it and give me the five business lessons of tongue slip. You know, yeah, I just thought, what a great song. Like what it just, it, it just has value. There's, this is from a, 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 a seasoned man here and it's not cause it's about drinking and business. You know, it's just, Hey, you know, there's business. 
there's negotiation and you were breaking it down. I thought, what a funny thing. So you were on the road and you felt in over your head, but you were taking meetings with folks to fly hundreds of people back and forth between the communist China and Thailand in a plane you guys owned. And it was stressful or it wasn't stressful, but it was high impact. That's yeah. fast, right? It, it was basically that where it's like, firstly, it's like planes, like is a weird symbol, right? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, people who have planes yeah. are not us, yeah, right? Like yeah. it's like the people you meet are always like these high level people with outsized power especially like think of like whoever is controlling air traffic yeah. in in china or or whoever in any country um and or some billionaire who's like oh i own this multi-conglomerate and uh, yeah. I just decided let's make an airline right so these are the people you're trying to compete against right um and and yeah you're you're having meetings with them and uh you're not you're out of the water so so, so to speak uh, you're, you're the fish out of water yeah they have a team and they're prepared and you're you're fledgling and you're starting and they have know the regulations and they know the routes and they have the connections and you guys are trying to get involved you, yeah you just have no leverage yes and, and so did you did you feel bad about all this lifestyle or did you you just said it was awesome um you loved it well it was eye-opening for sure yeah um it was like <clears throat> it was definitely right you're a young man in your 20s um with your brothers flying to shanghai to have meetings mm. yeah okay um i get it so yeah it was it was uh, really it was awesome um and what do you say like uh one thing you learn is uh that's that's what everyone does it's literally the format is like yeah. it doesn't matter if you're in beijing or if you're in korea or if you're here you're gonna first meet the people okay oh yes hello Gre uh, 90 yeah. degree bow in, in tokyo right like oh yes yes <laughs> um you know and then uh all right you have your initial meeting oh, okay i will take you for dinner uh, yeah. um please come um Oh yes, this is whatever. They're gonna teach you some shit about about yeah. their their cuisine, their local, whatever they do. This is our drink. This is how we do. Uh, and then, okay, do you want ladies? <laughs> right, we will go now for ladies. Yeah. That's how. That was literally the. No matter what country mm. you go to, that's mm. the format. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then and then I'm like, oh, this is why like women don't get hired because people <laughs> do this. Like, yeah. like you know what I mean. This yeah, is yeah. why like. <laughs> you don't see women in high level positions. So like, no. then you start to feel like, Oh shit. Like this kind of sucks sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole predicated diversity and inclusion in, in the workplace. Right. And some places are easier. And, and this is top level people, right? Like yeah. literally the people who run companies all over the world. Um, and like they, that's their like literal lifestyle. That's yeah. their lifestyle. Yeah. Certain companies. Right. Yeah, sure. Right. Definitely. And I'm not saying I'm not part of that or I am part of it, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it's understood. So, well, yeah, I mean, so that's a lot of onboarding. They didn't teach that in the, uh, in the undergraduate program. <laughs> We're at like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And, and uh, uh, I'm trying to sort of bring this to in a direction that's overlapping now with the rising 2015 compilation, Rage of the Machine, um, uh, like games did you know you, you now you're having a musical output at least or or some artistic creative output alongside going to beijing are they working hand in hand are these crazy experiences generating the the creativity or vice versa or or what's happening because you know sitting down for a meeting with korean businessmen and writing uh, rising compilation are very different things right and I'm not saying they're mutually exclusive, but they don't seem to. <coughs> they were, yeah, not related at the beginning. So, like, I would say this, this Tales of the City mm. is probably this, the first time I, I can, I, w I synthesize those yeah. experiences, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's, that's obvious to a first time listener or mm. someone now. I'm a 20th time listener, but yeah, okay. And so, um, 
um, are you are you spending a lot of time with a notebook or on a typewriter or on a computer so, writing down thoughts or things or are you were you still just doing business and and keeping the stuff in your head so at the time um i, I i'm a poet spoken word poet right so so when did that start? i am i not at the time i, I am one right that started like i said miss q big up right she, all right do okay. this go do that go do this oh yo there's a, a poetry slam on friday i put you in it um some guy don't worry some guy's gonna come and do some workshop and just go all right, right. so i missed that so this, uh, starting back in high school you were out on the stage too in addition mm-hmm. to uh to being in little abner little abner performances mm-hmm. you were on stage with a microphone doing spoken word well that was like a probably i'd say it was my senior year and okay probably t- so this is a very singular experience right but this is the f- poetry slam in the school yeah. i won the slam and then they they send you to miami beach to the big one of the city right um so yeah that was dope i was like oh shit like yo i'm good at this shit dope <laughs> um and so yeah that's it i'm a spoken word poet now um right. and so um I'm trying to figure out where to do the, do it. Um, so you learn like, in, and I was just moving, right? I moved to a new city. This yeah. is so. This is literally just before I start moving to Orlando, and then so I moved to Orlando, and the poetry spot in Orlando is uh, it's, uh, there was one called Diverse Word and another one called Touch the Mic, yeah. um, and that's. I say to the best poets on earth are in Orlando um, and Florida, but Orlando, because there is nothing like it. There is no, yeah, there is literally nothing like it anywhere. I've been around the world and there's nothing like it in the Mm. world. Um, You mean like those two venues? Yeah, and just the culture, the the spoken word poetry culture of Orlando. Yeah, okay. And so, so surrounding advanced. that, yeah, hundreds of people, um, thousands. It, 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 the qualitative. Yeah, I'm talking about the the, yeah, the yeah. level of artistic poetic quality um, that is undeniably unique to the place. And and yeah, I yeah. get you. I get you. So. So how did you find, I mean, how, apart from it being told to go there, I mean, how, how did you get into it and how often were you going to it? And was the internet part of the daily routine and, and online stuff, or was this still something you had to carry your notebook to and, and do, you know what I mean? What, what is, you I think you talk about this thing and now I'm going to sort of put some understanding around it. Okay. So. I'd say it's a little bit of both where I had a boy, um, my friend, his name was Oscar and I was at his crib and, uh, his sister was dating a poet. Mm. Right. And so it's like, Oh, yo, I think his, I think his name might've been Tariq. And he's like, Oh, Tariq, this is Pablo. He just won the slam at our school. And Tariq's like, Oh, dope, cool, cool. And he's like, Oh, and he's like, Yo, uh, you should look up this poet, Suhair Hamad. And then I looked her up, and it was led me to Deaf Poetry Slam, HBO stuff on YouTube. Right. And so now you're getting a daily, like you're you're exploring that universe. Um, But uh, I moved, then when I moved to Orlando, I was every Thursday, touch the mic Thursday. Okay, cool. Um, Every Thursday, that was... uh, literally what i did every thursday yeah so when you get on the plane you 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 get through your suspension of travel privileges from the u.s government you travel to come over here and you're going to get in the airline business are you also saying i'm going to find the first open mic i can or Um, are you just too bollocks by the travel and being here and saying no you like that's a thing you do everywhere you go where's the open mic right like and uh, did you find one right away 2015 um there was Bangkok poetry at the time, right? Right. Um, so they did a show about every every few months, like like every sixty to ninety days. There was a show at um, a WTF bar, yeah, um, right off the Tongue or BTS, right. Um, and so I, I remember like waiting, like fuck yeah, 
yes, come in, come on. Like, <laughs> For your first performance there? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like three months out or two months so, out? Yeah, or, anticipation. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. come on. Um, and uh, so I went and... There, open mic? Open mic. Mm. Or I use emails. Uh, you right, email, right. like, yo, I'm coming. Okay, well, you register. It's not super open mic, but yeah, for yeah. the most part, everyone who contacts them. Yeah, some them. bona fides process. Um, like, can't just show up. So, uh, but yes, uh, and it was cool cause it's not just poetry, but mm -hmm. like they had like multi audio visual, like yeah. people do stuff on projectors, um, pack the fucking bar, people outside the door. Um, and whatever, I did my poem and then there was another dude there who did his poem. His name's KJ mm -hmm. and he's spoken word poet too. Oh, oh shit. There you go. So uh, he's like, oh, you, the, the Spider-Man meme pointing to, you know, that meme where Spider-Man's pointing to himself. That happens. Like, oh, shit. Oh, cool, cool. Um, he's like, yo, like, I want to, he's like, I, I want to do an open mic. I'm working on something. Like, let's get together. And, and so he gathered, like, a lot of, like, it was three of us. It was him and three of us mm -hmm. that he gathered, the spoken word people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that he's so he is the founder of Bangkok Lyrical Lunacy, KJ. He's, okay, he's yeah. the one who started it. I the name, everything is his like spark. Right. So WTF had, was multimedia. So you could have come and done poetry or spoken word or visual stuff, and you two were kindred spirits because it was the same craft of spoken word. Mm. So it was. Maybe not didn't have music yet or something, but it was you guys said, "Hey, our so, idea is the same." Okay, yeah, basically, there's a and it was like a, it's poetry, right? Like right, the, right, 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 right. Poetry, poetry is the anchor. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's where we in Bangkok poetry, big up Bangkok poetry, because okay. uh, that's where KJ uh, met probably all of us. So KJ Lilu. So if I look at if I can go back to your pod uh, your podcast your um, website, we talked about that earlier, Pablo Roy. Pablo Roy. Um, couple of things to click on um one of them that comes up is a lilu icon which is short for lylu which is short for lyr lyrical lunacy which is findable on instagram and facebook uh here so if you're going to look at that and i think your face is uh throughout and you can see it in your some of your performances yeah and when you search it on facebook i don't know why but it mm -hmm. says oh this may be related to the sale of drugs. So it's not. So this is okay. the, right, for, the <laughs> <laughs> for the love of God. For the love of God. All right. Um, All right yeah. So, so when you get that warning, just say, okay, I'm going to go anyway. I don't know why it says that on Facebook. Because poets, Ginsburg, drug, <laughs> not just some ridiculous Google um, thing. But All it's right. easy to find. Yeah. And so um, you have the conference of the birds on your website ah uh, yes Ly lyrical lunacy i think that was filmed at speaker or recorded at speaker box i'm sure it's filmed as well but it's, it wasn't filmed but oh, it was recorded you. only yeah. so that's a nine episode or nine version or nine chapter or nine event uh um sp spoken word poet session from you but it's also very freewheeling because you have a lot of dialogue directly to the audience um that's right and so that's 2020 or 2019 that was just after i got stuck out of thailand right. for like eight months okay so i was in indonesia so it was just after i got back it was like december 2020 or 2021 or something oh so you did your your uh all rise hip-hop youth session yeah, and got stuck when, that's I, yeah. <laughs> okay so oops <laughs> you went for a week and <laughs> we're gone for eight months <laughs> can someone mail my socks yeah, yeah. yeah okay all right so let's sort of wade into this so you're on tongler i can picture the street it's dark and it's traffic -y and there's a mango salesperson not very far from you down at that thing by the subway stop there and you meet a mate whose kid name is kj and you have kindred ideas and spirit and you say let's open a thing and it's that doesn't mean here let's buy a spot or rent a spot that means let's see if we can get into a spot to see if they will stage lyrical lunacy or whatever the name of it was poet society at that yeah, point but I, he definitely already had it lined up at that time yeah uh, okay so kj had the idea and you no. you you were you jumped on and mm -hmm. and uh, out of those sessions has a larger community has developed or at least coalesced you all are together now yeah. and you have a common stage and purpose it sounds like and i'm sure there's offshoots of that i don't know about um and so 
are you keeping your stuff in a book? Are you throwing it in a drawer? Is it even meaningful to you? Do you do you discard it because you're self hating, or is you know <laughs> what, how does this all work with the, um, the artwork? I would keep it um, a mix. Like I do have some stuff written, but mostly it would be in like yeah, it was mostly digital. Like I would keep it like um, in my computer or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. And does the performance? filmed once filmed mean it's captured move on or do you have the stalwart uh uh there once was a man from miami you know (laughs) that you use every night like well no that's that's for me that's the idea right is like the thing should always evolve or Mm. or you're always like iterating Uh, right uh, so because it's part of the process of uh, of like learning the audience like how to read them is um this is all right yo i've seen a lot of people freaking perform right um lyrical lunacy every every month for nine years basically um just open mic open mic open mic performer 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 performer. so you you over time you see a pattern and it's like okay first is they're scared just because it's new maybe the first time or you know like the the they're gonna think i'm stupid they're gonna hate it or i i look dumb whatever the yeah this, real these ego driven like yeah. like fear and then they get over it because everyone's gonna love it and like good job like you did good we understand it's hard good job like and, yeah. and oh i'm gonna do that shit again yes um so then there's a progression that starts where it's like okay they're getting the basics of writing down and then the core of, of performance. Um, but there's there's a fear that they have until they ma- there's a, a switch that goes off. It's like, oh, shit, they don't know my poem. And they don't know that I fucked up when I did this. Yeah. And then then you can explore that a little more. And, and then you're like, oh, now I can experiment. It stops being about, mm. oh, this is I'm going to mess up. Yeah, yeah. You, you will. But it's like, oh, I'm gonna use it. Um, why didn't they? Why didn't they react how I expected them to react this way? Right? Mm. Oh man, what can I do? What do I have to change? So that's the that's the process. So yeah, I I, I to answer the question is, um, <laughs> I perform the same one all the time. Yeah. I have like four that I'm I'm performing all the time, um, and sometimes you let go of them and you, you that one's good enough. Whatever, move on. Um, but yeah, like it, it's a bit of both. I, I very rarely, um, uh, how do you say, I'm not, I'm not a new piece type of guy. Like I, 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 I like to, uh, wear them out. Like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sandra, <laughs> my partner says that I wear the same shirts all the time. Yeah. And yes, I do. All right. I mean, that could be literal or figurative too. But um, so the nine pieces that you did for the lyrical lunacy posting that you have on your site, or that's on SoundCloud. I think it was on SoundCloud, not Spotify. Um, uh, on the ly- lyrical lunacy SoundCloud, it's a, it's actually a podcast. So if you're a podcast person, you can literally subscribe, right. and it'll be there. And so that that is you. You wear those shirts often from that. Um. So that conference of the birds, actually, that was. It was my way of trying to use different, <clears throat> different like works that I've done mm. to create a cohesive message. Yeah. So it was. It was a. It's a collage, mm. basically. It's For a, sure. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's. Um, if I were, you know, this is idiotic for me to say. Um, in the Everglades one, which I like, which because I was could relate to that for some reason. I don't know why. Conference of the Birds. That's episode five or EP five. I'm not sure if that's what EP stands for. Yeah, episode. Um, out here, the grass it cuts back. Uh, somehow, you never sail. Uh, you move. You don't stagnate. Um, I, it was just very interesting imagery you're using in that that, and it was in it. I think. Mm, that one had the alligator metaphor. It's a poem called Splendor in the Sawgrass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and so I, you know, as a golfer, as a Florida guy, as a someone, you know, the, the imagery was 
uh, relevant to me, right? So that I was I was in, uh, nice. but but it was a very good. I thought that was a very good poem, and as I or section, and as I got down to to nine, uh, submerge at one at one uh, oneness oneness hyphenated o n e hyphen n e s s. Um, it was a continuation. So it was it was. Um, they felt like uniform unified pieces, but they felt distinct. Mm. Um, and that was two years ago now. Are we talking? It's got to be three. Yeah. This, that was probably the end of 2020 or, yeah. or the start of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. And so still we didn't talk about music. And so you have on a parallel path, you have these compilations, you have Rage of the Machine. You're working with other artists, Africa Islam, earlier on, I think. Uh, and one one name that didn't have a vowel in it, so I didn't want to try and pronounce it. Jinkovich, what was it? That's, so again, a variation of Leroy Jenkins. That's, oh, so that's you? That's Jenkins Leroy. That's me. Jeez, yeah, oh, yeah. that's how <laughs> smart I am. <laughs> so this Jinkovich guy is very yeah. different. <laughs> how idiotic. The, 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 the logic behind that was like, okay, if there's one way that... If someone's Googling you, it'll right, speak right. directly to you. It's got to be this, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was like, at the end, of the, basically, you someone, tricked me. No one could pronounce this. I was like, all right, probably we're, we're going to go with that. All right, so that was your <laughs> earlier. I was going to say, this dude is the same thing, I'm pretty sure here. But so um, you haven't built up that that Wasabi Bites group, which is who you currently play or record mm-hmm. with, right? Um, are you writing the music for those I don't write the music. No. Okay, so, uh, so none of Rising, Rage of the Machine, uh, like Games did, uh, uh, Bad Big Bad Wolf, or um, uh, 2017 that. Loop Soup, uh, right, left? The, all that is Graham. All right. Graham Lynch, Wasabi all right. G. All right. And so are you and Graham Wasabi G? Um, so Wasabi Bites is a band. We got uh, we got Tommy Merkett, who uh, okay. he does our, our guitar. We have Culp, who's a percussionist. Okay. And my, myself, I, I'm vocalist. And uh, uh, Graham uh, Wasabi G, he is the producer. And he does, uh, basically, he's the mastermind of, of yeah. everything. Yeah. So is the um, Belfort, Big Richard Bars, Belfort, Big Richard Bars, is, are those the same fellas or different? That's another, yeah, that's a different okay. squad, yeah. Yeah, because it, it didn't sound like the same type of guitar or, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Which was which we have to cover in this session because that was that was awesome, right? Seventeen minutes or so. Mm. Um, uh, I want to find out how much time you put into doing that and getting that down with the fellas, uh, all guys, uh, uh, the, the Big Richard bars or wh- whoever that is. But so you have these um, writers. I mean, there's a couple of things they do that have me confused. Uh, I'm sure they're they're explainable and and maybe not by me but um um the 2021 album uh, 20 spelled out 20 spelled out one spelled out um which was in 2021 i assume um and and the earlier material um doesn't have a lot of um vocals not a lot of vocal tracks so, so i joined wasabi bites I, I, so everything before that was before I, I joined. So right. So actually, Wasabi Bites and Bangkok Lyrical uh, Lunacy are very interrelated because, as as you said, uh, KJ had the spot lined up, right? right? The spot was the Overground Cafe uh, and Bar, which was at the time on Soy 22, right off where Holiday Inn is. Right. Um, where? Uh, where? It's not there anymore, but right. it was a. Uh, was it I by Titanium? I think it's a place called like La Luna now or something. Oh right, okay. Um, yeah. I yeah. don't. I know it is. Um, okay, so uh, Sukhumvit Street in Bangkok, we always talk about on the show. So uh, you guys had a spot, and this is where the roads converge. And Graham was the owner of that spot. Oh, nice. Okay. And so, um, as so as you said, KJ lined it up. Eventually, KJ moved uh, back to the United States. Um, but I was still doing the show every every month, mm. um, and then he's like, "Yo, uh, would you mind to like write some lyrics for these songs that we got?" I was like, so the first time I ever went into a recording studio was with Wasabi Bites. Nice for for uh, Tales of the City. Uh, that was no, that was uh, 
the early early thing 2021 yeah like like games did games did yeah harmony okay um yeah so that was featuring jenkins leroy right is like before I drew, like you know Jankovic, I mean? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jankovic, is fair enough, it's true. That was the, that's why I'm Pop Lee right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, that'll be in the dumbest moments of the podcast where the host failed the audience. Um, yeah, okay, and so how about Nasi? I see it oh, on man. the shirt, do I? Yeah, yeah this is uh, um, yeah. it so. <clears throat> Lyrical Lunacy has been um, just a blessing because I'm in Bangkok, one of the most frequented places on earth. By visitors. Yeah. Yep. Um, Travelers. And so we get that traffic of talent, right? Who's like, oh, this is open mic. Okay, yo, I'm coming through open mic. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, come do it. Right. Um, How do they get in touch with you? Let's just be clear. Are you the, the current... Uh, uh, leader of open mic if you attach titles or are you the current email reader of inbound traffic for their yeah I, okay for sure so, so it's yours so that's how i hear it in town around town it's your thing and so you're running it now so so yeah like um i basically i'm the one hey what's up, what's up? Yeah, yeah okay um so um yeah they, by email or maybe instagram at the time instagram wasn't big so who hit me up it was uh far beyond okay um and uh it was like yo i'm here I'm, I'm gonna be in bangkok i'm coming through um i'm teaching this uh program this hip-hop program blah blah blah, 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 blah 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 and then it's like yeah come through and so he comes he, he joins and then whatever we 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 get to know each other um and then he leaves and uh he's like yo meet my homie here uh, his name's Adi. Um, he's a really dope producer. Y'all should like get to know each other and, and work together. I was like, oh, dope. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, okay, um, Adi. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're now I'm in contact with Adi, and he has these beats, and then I start writing and recording. Um, and so the first like, okay, so the first like time in a recording studio was with Wasabi Bias, but this is like my first like hip hop project, right? Mm. Like, so this mm. is. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, me and Adi, and and so after that is like, oh, let's just be a group. Yeah. Um, Nasi Rice. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. And so, um, COVID is coming at you guys pretty fast, then, right? So you you get together as a group of four or five for projects, and then you head go headlong into COVID, sort of. Yeah, we yeah. Adi would come like maybe annually to bangkok yeah um because he again he was part of the program for far beyond Kim. right right um and um he so he came like a few more times on a similar program like where it's like they they get a uh, talent hip, it was like specifically hip-hop talent from across southeast asia they yeah. get them together it's like a incubator of sort hip-hop right, right, incubator right. Yeah. um soft power thing <laughs> right sponsored by the um the embassies yeah um interesting so so yeah yeah i never thought i'd, I'd hear that sponsored by the embassies okay well cool so so now let's go let's let's move it maybe speed this up i spent a lot of time in your history and i apologize for going in so deep but it's it's all coming together for me so wasabi bites tales of the city 2022 release last year we're in 2023 january here um eight or nine songs in it depending on how you look at it um sort of some oddities like um perry urban perry urban uh is a musical or an instrumental song and then you have um uh, another song uh his lips didn't move yeah. which is uh music over the top of what sounds like a uh, news reporting of a of, of a man seeing uh, uh having an extraterrestrial encounter mm. Um, is was that a recording that you guys found on the internet or used or that the band used um, or was this something someone narrated um, I'm, I'm not sure actually that might be um, so one thing I love about Graham is he he's a journalist yeah right so he finds like these uh, very like cool like clips um, I'm sure is like uh, public domain stuff yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. Um, 
and yeah so he like like he he's i'm sure he's like a like yeah. uh, how some djs are crate diggers he's like a news clip digger <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah this is like you go into a town and you look for old postcards he, he looks for old articles or audio right yeah oh man jur- man big up to journalists Cause journalists like w- last time i went to um we did some shows in sydney and i went and uh i'm chilling with graham and he's he, Graham's an OG journalist, like uh-huh. straight up. Like okay. so, um, and then he's showing, he's introducing me to his OGs, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we got like all recording, like, like, yeah. like of like every interview we've ever done, right?" So, right. Like, <laughs> and then that's when it started hitting me. I'm like, "Oh shit, that's what I do with the poems." Oh shit, like, yeah, like, yeah. like it's like documenting. You know what I mean? So like, uh, yeah. Um, I'm sure that's what he does. He like goes through collections of of news clippings and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, thematically tales of this, of the city, um, then, you know, you have these sort of three or four rock and songs come out of the box. Are you referring to this? And I hate doing this, but I don't know what I'm talking about. So is this, are you calling this a hip hop album? Did you say that before? Wasabi Bites is, um, I wouldn't say it's purely hip hop. It, yeah. It's it's more electronic, like mm-hmm. right. So I I I don't know if I call it the right way as an electronic dance band <laughs> it sounds with like rap. It. Like that's yeah. what I I don't know. I don't. So it's 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 hard to. Uh, All right. I, I don't know. Like we've done hip hop shows and yeah. we've done like Good. dance shows and, and. All right. So I'm not going to feel too idiotic here when I try and describe this, but yeah. So I I mean I think about if you're looking stuff up. Um, get the bag wheels up and and my particular favorite because of the lyrics and because of the strange you have the introduction you have what i guess is good uh, a great drum beat that i like um and then it changes like a half a note and it comes into your lyrics which i hadn't heard before it's it sounds like an older like a, a note bender that you'd have on a keyboard and it's just a very strange style so i don't know tommy or Graham or wh- whoever did that but very cool i was like oh it's just a, a rattling sound, you know, how when it's just that sort of move up and then you come raging, I guess that's you with the lyrics, right? Um, your lyrics? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so this is, uh, like I've said, million dollar uh, lesson. Oh, yes. And it, it has just some great, um, first line, what do you know about making payroll? What do you know about making payroll? Just a, just a hilarious, <laughs> like if you're a business guy or like, <laughs> Well, everything, and it's the bane of my existence, right? Like, <laughs> it's just such a, a great lyric. But then I thought, well, okay, payroll and a secondary word is, you know, what do you know about making money? Thirdly, you know, what do you know about providing? And then you talk about it. Yeah, the next line, um, I didn't write them down, but I, I knew you'd remember it, is, you know, sort of, yeah, I got a village of mouths to feed. Just sort of the idea, that's payroll. Like, taking care of a community is payroll. Like, right. not your worries about the business day, like making ends meet at the company, you know, but I just thought, Oh, what a great, uh, this tales of the city. He got me sort of looking at the skyline and now this is a very sort of cool concept. And I thought, okay, I'm going to follow these lyrics in. And I thought just a a great series of evocative lyrics. And so if you're listening to this, um, I would normally play a click, but I think I'm going to stop that for a while until I can figure out the legal pieces of how to do that better for you guys when you come in. But just a great song. So, h- how did you come up with that? Do you get the beats, or do you get the rhythms, or the music's first, and pl- and have it over the top, or did you have Million Dollar Lesson written somewhere, just waiting to go along to music? Um, the thing I love about doing these wasabi bite songs is because they challenge the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, um, it's not uh, something I typically. It's not a genre I typically enter, and I I, st- I have to study a lot, right, um, mm-hmm. to understand Graham's perspective. Um, and so some, he points me in the direction sometimes, um, but, uh, yeah, um, he gives me the music and it's like, all right, here it is. He, and he's very like, he's like, all right, here's your parts here, here's here and here. Like point zero or uh, zero, zero colon zero five seconds to zero. zero. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, so it gives you the space allocations and you're going to be singing there or rapping there or talking there or doing whatever you do. And then, so then it's like, okay, what am I going to say? You know, um, does there an album concept yet? Is the artwork on the wall and you're sort of, okay. So it's, 
So you could have written about the Everglades and sawgrass in that one had the, yeah. had the mood overtaken you. <laughs> that's, my, that's literally my go-to strategy for almost anything. <laughs> How you feel about the sawgrass? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, um, no, so um, let's see. The, these men, the, these were challenging to write. Um, firstly um because it's content wise right it's mm -hmm. like what do i want to say um right um what uh what's my point of view is is my question right mm -hmm. that's like that's literally usually where i'm starting from is what is the uh, thesis statement all right so what's the thesis statement a million dollar lesson um Man, and did you hear that from the music or did you have that ready and just percolating at the back of your head? I'm sure it was. I'm listening. Um, I listened to it a shit ton before I even write anything just to like groove to it. And uh, I was like, million dollar lesson. I was like, dun, 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 dun. so I'm probably like, dun, 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 dun. it's like, you know, so what melody. Mean? Yeah. 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 Dun, 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 right. So. And this is like, oh, relaxing. I might feel relaxed. Or this is literally how it came. So I was like, no oh, million dollar. Yeah, no pressure. Yo, chill, that's man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because I would th have thought, like, if, if you got hooked, it would have been in that first one that goes, Beep, like, in that in that 10th measure where it comes in with that bend. I was like, oh, this is like a home run mo musical moment right here. Like, do something. And you say, you know. What you know about making peril? And I just thought, whoa, sheesh. <laughs> great, great first lyric. And then I thought, okay, it's almost a step back for the chorus. Like, okay, yeah, what, this, no stress and, you know, no pressure is the first. So you're referring to that first piece. So it's like, it was a very interesting construction because usually we wait for the chorus to like define the moment, but you already did like, hey, what do you know about making peril? Don't stress about it. Yeah, just, and it's just a funny way to deliver the message to me because I write in a different style, but I thought, wow, this is such a great song. It's remained my favorite song as I listened to it lyrically. Dope. Yeah, just because it was set up. And so you had to go through this a lot to hear it, but you heard no stress. You, you hummed mm. no pressure, no stress, and it's a million-dollar lesson. Mm -hmm. And did you? how long before you come up with those 10 words or whatever it is, right? One, two, three, four. Yo, it Weeks, took long. Months? It took long. These, um, uh, basically, it was like, yo, try to have it done by this time. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll get it done. Like cool. tomorrow? or He, he, he <laughs> gives, like, Gra Graham is very specific. He gives me a brief, like, yo, here's the tracks. Here's your parts. Here's the, he'll give me a vibe sort of sometimes, like uh -huh. a direction. Um, like, um, yeah, like a sort of like in... In, in wheels up there's a the way it goes and then da, 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 da. so that was very yeah, intentional yeah. right so he's like yo try and do something like this um so uh first is that and then it's like okay here's the vibe he wants like like was oh dark or one was gothic i was like oh uh, yeah gothic okay well how do i get, get to do a gothic vibe so did you know that word before he said it and I did mean, you have affiliations with it in your head i sure have the I, I'm not trying up. to, yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm like dark gothic. and. I know there's gothic art, the there's gothic yeah. architecture, there's <laughs> gothic subculture, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I generally dark is my, um, my, uh, where my interpretation of gothic. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, but it took long in the sense that, like, um, it took a lot to figure out what to say, basically. Yeah. You know, like, Every time I write a song, I reward myself with a milkshake. There we go. Yeah. So that, that's uh, like I would find myself because I just want a milkshake all the time. Right. Nope. You didn't write that fucking song. Oh, I see. This is a dietary yeah. restraint. Like this is a reward. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> fortunately, it's not something else, but or maybe not fortunately. So that's good. But, uh, Could have been an avocado. So yeah, I had to work for those milkshakes. All right, um, cool. I remember that. Was this being, a three milkshake song or just one big one, or was this no, no big it, deal? Each one for each of these songs yeah. is a milkshake. Same size milkshake, yeah, same yeah, reward. Hundred percent. Um, and was this a success to you in your head? Did you like this song? So, 
the reason I love all these songs is because, again, I feel like it's the first time I was able to synthesize a perspective to speak from. Yeah. Right. Um, everything else I do is very like, I don't know, sort of like in a way. Uh, it's a one shot. I feel like instru- it's a lecture. Yeah. Honestly, like yeah. I feel like most of everything before this is very like here's the thing i think you should know about yeah um yeah you're teaching a classroom and hey mm. fall asleep or not but i'm gonna lecture on on, on the fastball yeah basically yeah. And, and so this is the first time i'm like yo this is a cool point of view that i feel like is uh you know like people can like relate to in a way and be like oh shit it's intriguing in another way like yeah yeah, I think we're having that discussion. I think that's what tongue slip was for me. I was like, wait a minute, this guy just penetrated beyond, you know, he's now, I'm, I'm now synthesizing with this and saying, yeah, that's right, exactly, solid. Then it wasn't the classroom. It was like shared experience, a universal truth, right? <laughs> and as, as you go through, so let's just say, you know, make your money, watch your money theme up front of Tales in the City. And as you progress through this and you get, to to million dollar lesson um, and tongue slip you you know you're starting to get burned and you got to watch what you have and you're sort of protecting this the safe uh, and then you move into um, jump on it which is a, a, another performer now coming in which is a, a nice break in the in the sequence I think um, and then you have this thing Nighthawks mm. which starts to get dark and sort of wait a minute this is the veteran singer coming into play now right and i thought the lyrics of nighthawks i thought must have been written later in the sequence so this one was like you you asked me oh do you have these things written already yeah sometimes this was written already huh interesting uh, well i would say it was it's a poem it started this started as a spoken word poem um, and I couldn't finish. I couldn't finish because, again, I'm like I have a thesis. I want to write. I want to communicate, um, and I couldn't do it. And then finally, when I heard the song, I was like, "Yo, this is it. This is the music for this. This yeah. is not a this is not a poem anymore." Um, and I was able to con- make the conclusion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who's in control of the time on your soul, right? I was like, okay, that's not that's not you know ktv <laughs> drinking that's mm. not million dollar lesson that's it's it's linked to it though definitely it's sort of the degradation of of those first three pieces of excess get your bag get your cash you know and it's like wait a minute the nighthawks wham upside the head who's in control of this so then you have this weird musical piece pondering and then you have this weird you know i did at least in i uh the spotify loader at that point you know i uh, then you have this spaceship thing. I was like, all right, this has gone from the dollars in your bag to the ethereal pretty quickly with a lot of musical variants all the way through it. And I thought, this is, I don't know what this album is. And I finished and I was like, this is awesome. You know, this is well worth sitting through in a one listen battle to try and see if you can keep up with it. That's what's up. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> Every, like, growing up, is like you listen to the thing, right? It's like a, yeah. it's an essay. I feel like it's like an album is an essay sometimes. And, um, yeah. Yeah, that's, cool. that's what's up. Yeah, I mean, I haven't asked about your musical influences in that critical uh, Miami to back home transition, but um, who were you listening to back then? Were you in love um, with the storytellers or were you in love with metal? My f- growing up, it was rap. Rap, 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 rap. Um, so uh, Eminem, Ludacris, Common was my is my favorite rapper. Yeah. Um, Kanye West was my favorite rapper. Um, I mean, I still listen to, I mean, whatever Kanye is, like, I love those songs. I still, like, listen to those songs. Um, uh, what else? I, yeah, so very hip-hop, uh, southern hip-hop, right? I'm in Miami. Hmm. Um, Trick Daddy. Um, yeah, like uh, Outcast. That's Southern hit Florida guys mm. or something? Georgia uh, guys? Uh, Georgia. Like yeah, yeah. Atlanta's hip hop capital, culture capital of the world, I feel like. So, yeah. yeah, basically everything coming out of there. They're uh-huh. 
um, Ludacris is Atlanta. Um, yeah, so I was a rap guy. And then whatever, you, you watch MTV and see, like, uh, you know, the uh, My Chemical Romance. You see mm. uh, The Killers. You see, you're right? So you're, you also listen to all of that. So do you for see me, them and hate them, or do you see No, them I, them? I love it. Like, like uh, it's the song lyrics. For me, it was, uh, I, I, I knew all those songs, mm. like, word for word. Everyone's like, yo, stop singing the song. You're ruining the song for me. I just knew the song. I love the song. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit in the car and sing, and they'd be like, stop. <laughs> You had one song where you started to sing um, and you stopped uh, on this album. I'm going to sit and I w wouldn't have written this down as a note, but I thought, huh, this is going to be the song where he starts to sing. Um, you know what I'm talking about? No. Hmm. Oh, funny moment. Um, yeah, I was in Million Dollar Lesson. It's at the end. There's a line, I, I can't think of it now. Um, anyway, I, I just, okay, I thought, okay, here he, here he comes. Going to be singing pop songs soon here. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, good, I, I'd like to spend a lot more time th th talking about that, and maybe uh, we can do that again later. But um, So then, so you, you run through an album compilation, Wasabi Bites, you come in, um, you have Lyrical Lunacy out there, you have... Um, uh, uh, Return of the Mackerel, which is a one-shot deal. And then you have this thing that was astonishing, this Belfort, Big Richard bars at Speaker Box. Uh, uh, full disclosure, big fan of Eddie's at Speaker Box. Big up, Eddie. Uh, and we, Kingpin sponsors uh, the uh, some of his, his shows that he puts on there, uh, which is our guitar line. Um, but you were there at the In the Box sessions with, I don't even know if the band is called Big Richard, Richard Bars, oh. yeah, okay. So j a jazz band, fair to summarize. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. The, um, Piano, drums, bass, guitar. I don't know if any of those guys sing when they play without you, but you were up rapping with them. Can I say rapping? Yep. Um, so, in in of the seventeen minutes set, you're in there about half, maybe mm -hmm. less. So this is, um, as you see, I, I attach myself to a musical genius. Well, there you go. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> um, and uh, so the genius in this situation is uh, Matt, a.k.a. Dickon. Um, oh, you, yeah, I, I, you mentioned that earlier, Dickon, right? Mm. right? I didn't know what you were talking about. I thought you were talking about Charles Dickens or something. I was like, um, what, what the hell are you talking no, about? No, Matt, um, and, you know, he is a, like, jazz nerd, funk nerd, bass. He's the bass guy? Nerd, yes, okay. and, but also composer. Mm. Um, so, so, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing, you know, always doing shows, the jazz style, everyone gets the the 20 minutes solo you know what i mean um um so right, yeah right. That's, that's why i love that because you get room to breathe right you can engage the crowd in other ways so did um, you practice that session with them before so big richard bars um the the reason like i wanted to get together as a band is because i want a house band for lilu right for lyrical lucy right um and then um, but uh, me and Matt were like, Matt's like, yo, I like, I, I, I make, I make, I compose. I'm a producer, so right, it's right. like, all right, let's, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, we practiced. Uh, um, we were practicing already because we were doing shows, Lilu shows, or um, just uh, getting ready for just learning the songs. We'd be in in the studio just practicing and learning the songs. And, yeah. So again, with your with my earlier comments, I'd follow the same thing as uh, f just from my point of view of looking at what you did. Uh, does do they have set songs that they want to present to you, and you put lyrics over? Or do you walk in and say, "Here are my lyrics. I'm going to fill the space," and then you guys jam when I stop, or how does that work? It's a mix of both. <laughs> um, so um, the first ones like. Uh, it ain't easy to be this fly like yeah, yeah. or like all of those um the ones with the he heavy solos right uh, where everyone gets like their their, yeah. their moment right yeah. um those were already composed and i wrote for them mm. belfort is me and matt in the room together um and he's like yo like check this out but up that's cool um and and yeah like like trying to with big richard bars was the idea we just want to be stupid and fun huh. right um 
And so that was the idea there. Belfort is, I feel like we, again, a synthesis of like, all right, this is what we want to do. Stupid and fun. Yeah, that's sort of cake throwing is stupid and fun, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> or pie throwing. This, <laughs> this was a jazz band with <laughs> embedded references to the Wolf of Wall Street and onward. You know, it just <laughs> had a little thinking that went into it, right? So, so the, the, the stupid part is... Um, because it's free flowing and not structured, and you guys are pretty loose about it. Yeah, like okay. I, I would say, uh, definitely pretty like right. Um, everyone free, like we're all we all understand like yeah, okay, yeah. freestyle. You come in here, I'm coming in here, like yeah, right. Yeah. So like we roll with the punches for okay. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would I would challenge you on your own use of words, but they're your words. But I'd say it's not stupid. You know, I mean, it was oh, well <laughs> to me, it was high art i was like what in the hell is going on here now you know not in comparative to your earlier works or other things that wasabi bites was doing but i thought that was um you know when i look at the lilu performances um in the totality there's a lot of fun and silliness going on in there you know as, as you're trying to engage the audience but this was filmed to a small room on a venue and i thought wow this is super professional in terms of how tight it is mm. yeah just yeah we, we for that we definitely practiced um yeah, um, yeah like uh, uh that uh the big richard bars is tough to pull off because it does require intensive practice yeah uh, yeah um yeah so it's yeah i'm glad yeah. you have recognized that <laughs> yeah no well, good for you and, and you were dancing and i i could i you know judging relativity is ridiculous so as you know, are you comfortable? Are you, you know, I thought, okay, this guy looks like he's been doing this for a long, long time. Yeah, man. Dancing. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an MC. I gotta, like, right, you gotta. Yeah, don't get up and dance. You gotta, no, the MC gotta engage the crowd. Like, you gotta. You break into a show tune and start dancing ever? Um, I'm, I mean, some, not necessarily, but if I'm rapping, right, like, it's like, yo, we're here to have a good time, man. Yeah. Like, you don't need to be, like, So standing. how many times have you rapped on stage? 10,000, 5,000, 1,000, 200, 100, I don't know. 50? Um, quite a lot. I, would, I wouldn't say 10,000. How much is, how much is 10,000? A lot. If, if the average, <laughs> if, the, if the average rap is three and a half minutes. Like <laughs> no, but how many times have you been on stage rapping? Cause it just, um, a lot. Yeah. yeah hundreds, quite a bit. Hundreds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause it just seemed, I was like, wow. God. This is just coming out of nowhere in your social media presence, right? Well, it's just like wham. Well, again, for nine years I've been emceeing a show, right? That, by your own description, is spoken word, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a spoken word show, but the MC is an MC, right? He has to, the M It's more than just rapping; it's relating to the people. Yeah, I hear right? you. Um, but I think the Ben the Ben sequence was bar sequence was. You know, you were rapping and dancing. Yes, for sure. That's <laughs> there, I'm rapping and dancing. That's what I'm here to do, for sure. I'm a, okay. I'm a, right. I'm I'm singing songs and dancing. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there it is. I mean, I mean, so that just as a new to uh, Pablo uh, fan, I uh, was like, what? Wow, where did this come from? You know, I've just, you know, and I didn't get to see yeah. the video. Oh, There's other pieces. Well, and I gotta say, right? Um, <laughs> like, I like that. The blessings I've had simply because um the dancing mm. firstly how do i uh, uh like um there you there was a time again when i met far beyond right yeah every sunday uh we would gather um the the hip-hop street dancers of bangkok would mm. gather okay um and uh, then rory who is a I don't know if you know Rory. He's yeah, he was a here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so he's he's DJing. He DJs Lilu, right? And so he, he's like, "Yo, can I come through? Are they gonna mind if I come through?" The gym? I was like, "Fuck yeah, they're gonna love it." <laughs> um, so um, so then he so it becomes a thing. Like every Sunday, Rory's DJing. The dancers are there, um, and I'm learning. I'm, like, I'm not a music guy. I'm yeah. telling you, I attach myself to really talented okay. music people. Maybe right. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm learning, because uh, these are all, it's hip hop, right? Yeah, yeah. Firstly, I'm astounded, like, oh, this is like the culture I, I know. And it's here in Thailand. And I, they relate to the same like 
music and content I relate to in just about the same way. And like because they're very talented dancers, I'm seeing them represent parts of the music that I never like even yeah. paid attention to. Interesting. So um so I learned everything rhythm like like this from them. Uh, dan um, the dance movements. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, okay. Like like gestures. Even in the speaking now, like like uh, like just hearing nuances um in in the songs uh that I don't my ear doesn't in initially catch. Yeah. Them. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, there was yeah, the how, how do you know when you've been tested? You know, uh, the, Mos the Moses line. I thought, wow, the, you know, the, even lyrically, this is complex. Just to just write it down and try and catch up with them to do so. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, I I don't know anything about hip hop. I, I, I didn't know Atlanta was the capital, so I, I'm, I've got a big learning curve here. But uh, you know, as you describe this here, I can understand the way you're putting it forward to me. So it's that's very helpful to hear. But it's interesting that. You know the gestures along with it, especially when you're performing with a band that's as as skillful as the group you were up there playing with mm -hmm. and with Wasabi Bites. I imagine when you're up there on stage with them, it's oh, it's. So, so I'm, <laughs> I, I'm I'm tr I'm literally training. I'm going I'm going uh, next month to Australia for some shows. I have to train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's exhausting. Yeah, yeah. it's called practice. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like, but also no, endur you. endurance. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah like, keep it together for two hours. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, don't get hurt, right? <laughs> Do it right. All right, let's. Well, let's run through a couple of things. Um, All Rise Hip Hop Youth Summit, uh, Autumn 2020. You get locked out of the country because uh -huh. COVID's hitting, but very cool to look at. If you're looking at his website, check this out. Um, there's a the link will pull you up to a, not a compilation, but a short sort of yeah, it's like a YouTube or best something. dub. It's four guys, different singing. So, but there's, there's many, many segments of this out there. Right. Mm. And many performers performed it at young folks in Indonesia. Was it? Yes. Aceh yeah. you said? Aceh, yeah. That's where, <laughs> was there a historical significance between Homeland and Aceh or? <laughs> well, Adi is from Aceh. Oh, ah, okay. Adi, so, so, all right. Uh, all right. My uh, Nazi partner. Yeah. Okay. All right, and so it went back. That's funny. You guys sort of have uh, global warming issues in common, I guess. To put it. I mean, Aceh got hard punishment from... Uh, yes. Right, and, uh, and you did in Homeland, or, or in uh, 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 Southern Florida when you were growing up. So yeah, 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 actually, yeah, yeah. Right. I never thought of that, yeah. Well, and I'm not trying to... But, uh, yo, the, the, the tsunami was... Yeah, yeah. Worse. Well, I, I, quantifying death is weird, right? So, but it's just but the, yeah. the the reach, right? Miami is a pinpoint. Right. The tsunami, you hit a radius around yeah, yeah. Earth. Yeah. yeah. It just. Well, there you go. So back to the, you know, it's all roads lead to <laughs> what we know. Sort of weird, but really cool initiative. Could you describe it briefly? What What was the thinking around that? Or okay, so as I said, Adi has he's uh, frequented these types of programs. Um, mm. So, uh, what, what types are those? Like where. Um, they gather like they basically ask for applications of of talented people um and musicians in this instance they they sponsor them to come into like at that time when when it was adi's case to bangkok mm. um and like just basically collaborate work on it. the idea is firstly get skills technical skills training for like production of a song ideation um uh and then uh performing the song as well mm. um just the the step a to z basically of making mm. a song like um, how to use pro tools or how to mix uh, yeah or not necessarily because they would have very uh, understanding of that but more so like just um like how to be more organized about it how okay, to have right. how to make a process yeah, about it yeah. um rather than like i my inspiration hit me just now and here I yeah can, here i got it know? written down i just wrote it yeah so yeah. there's okay. that but also it's um it's uh like hip hop history cuz it's the 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 angle is hip hop started in new york right so mm. um it's an american culture yeah um so that's the so we're talking about here's the context of of hip hop right um here is like right like uh there this is what the bronx was like um at the time you know it's the early it's like 
70s type era right yeah, so yeah. this is the con social concept <laughs> yeah. context right yeah, so, yeah. um and then we go through like whatever this yeah. is the first rap song whatever so like a history yeah so it's, class, it's, it's classroom stuff yeah mm. yeah cool um so yeah there's it's, it's workshops basically um, yeah. so so Adi was like yo like uh we can we can design a program and get funding to do it let's go let's do it and so we we created it and that's what happened um it's like building an airline huh? mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's, we is, it was like what 17 uh, really talented uh like really really talented artists uh from ache all from different parts of ache um which is um it's a province in, yeah. in sumatra yeah. yeah far away hard to get to mm. yeah yeah it's sort of remote very obviously i used to stick out like a thumb yeah yeah Boulay, 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 Boulay. yeah <laughs> you know but you know it's good good folks yeah so um yeah very cool initiative well so you know it's funny is i, I don't want to keep i do want to keep going but i'm sensitive to time and your commitments as well um was there anything else you wanted to talk about today anything you're working on anything you want to get on this record so you can come back and watch this in 10 years and say uh, i didn't mean any of that or um no I so beyond lyrical lunacy are you working on any projects that have names that are have venues that that recur uh, uh kinetic poetics is uh, a different one i've so heard of kinetic poetic that's rory right yep, uh right. rory uh superfly mm. um rory does it's a really dope situation at kinetic poetic so if you yeah. get a chance there's one on uh, i don't know if the, the if this is before yeah just shout wherever it out you so are in time they uh, happen uh january uh 27th it's a friday i think next week so check that out um but if, if the last basically about the last friday of every month yeah uh he organizes it and so um the musicians again very talented musicians mm. um who are very comfortable with uh you know going going uh unscripted yeah. um and they they take in the poets and it, it's like it's cool because it's something you'll never see, uh, you never saw, and you never see again. Because it's always going to be something. Right. Even like if I do the same poem, it's yeah. never going to be the same. You know, yeah. um, which is what I like because it should always be iterative. Yeah. Um, so yeah, kinetic poetic, um, and um, but that's uh, other. That's not uh, anything. I I mean, I go to them. Right. Right. Well, I'm I'm not saying you create. I'm um, just trying to what else you're up to or what so, else you want to comment on but so yeah yo the slam we do the poetry slam every single month uh we do an open mic every single month where is that um, at just different places poetry slam is usually at live lounge okay um the open mic it, it bounces about uh we do it at speaker box quite frequent okay um and uh let's see uh, other than that um yeah i don't know good all right so you said you're hitting the road to go to australia and you're doing sit-ups at night and not eating milkshakes uh <laughs> any new material coming out before then um albums songs so books? the the trip is in support of of, of tales of the city so, oh cool right? okay so, yeah, i guess that's uh, i'm definitely going to australia so um it's sydney mid feb um and uh it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be dope wasabi bites we haven't performed since before covid oh good well good well then we'll try if we can figure out how to sneak in maybe some sound bites a million dollar lesson on here and, and and tongue slip if we can if we can get the approvals with you and your guys on that if they don't want it that's fine i get that i mean it's it's your touring and stuff so uh but let's 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 call this the end of section one maybe we'll take a break here but would you be willing to read, do some spoken word or, or a song here in yeah. this room today? Well, well, I was hoping to do Million Dollar Lesson. Good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Good. So are you going to do it without accompaniment? Um, or how do you do it? I could do it a cappella. I don't know if you... Um, if we can try and go into the board, but we'll, we'll see. But let's take a break then. We're going to come back and hear Pablo doing Million Dollar Lesson in the Roman Anton podcast studio. We're taking a break. Okay, we are back, Roman Anton podcast. We have Pablo about to sing Million Dollar Lesson for us here. So, Franco, can you get us started? What you know about making payroll? 
flying 500 deep. What you think I gotta make, bro? You worry sick about your rent? I'm worried about a small village where the mouths getting pet. Mountains of debt called the sound of the spick. And I still show my face around town for respect. Straight in the eye. I ain't shy. I ain't got your cash. I might buy you lie. What you know about working miracles? God back me up when I state my deliverables. Even when the odds are terrible. I do the damn thing. Shit'll make you shiver too. Lit a few. Smile through the ridicule. With the cute little baddie from Syracuse. Cutting loose. Floating on the river cruise. Vivid hues make your worries minuscule. No pressure, no stressing. That's a million dollar lesson. No pressure, no stressing. That's a million dollar lesson. Pressure, no stressing. That's a million dollar lesson. That's a million dollar lesson. What you know about pressure? How you gonna act when your livelihood is threatened? How you know, has it been tested? When the chips are down, are you like Moses in the desert? What you know about betrayal? Deliver far from suffering, they stab you in the navel Like a diplomatic cable They leaking all your secrets while you leaking on the table Real life, it ain't a fable Every move you make, better make sure you make out the gray wolves And the sharks underneath you, especially the snakes Whose salary you pay, dude? What's your threshold? That's the question Everybody got a price, if you don't it ain't been tested Trust is currency invested If you ain't accounted to, I'm doubting your successes No pressure, no stressing It's a million dollar lesson No pressure, no stressing It's a million dollar lesson These are million dollar lessons A Harvard MBA couldn't teach what I'm professing I ain't studied for no tests Learn from turbulent skies so I fly through the headwinds Cynicism best repress it It take over your team like demonic possession It's up to you, what's your intention? Kick rocks with the Flintstones or fly with the Jetsons Live and direct, come and vibe with the best Still thrive on my rivals, they try for my neck Align any weapon against me and bet You'll be hard pressed to find it effective In the dark I'm luminescent I came up out the swamp, out its murky depths Just like a lotus floating restive I take it all in stride, man, you never catch me stressing No pressure, no stressing It's a million dollar lesson No pressure, no stressing It's a million dollar lesson No pressure, no stressing It's a million dollar lesson No pressure, no stressing That's a million dollar lesson. Yeah, nice. Thanks for that, Pablo. That was awesome. Yeah, it's funny listening to that all week and then hearing it live. What a good, good week for me. Appreciate you coming in. All right, hey, let's do this. You got a spot on uh, San Seb Canal. We're going to go stop by now just for a couple minutes. You can show us one of your writing let's spots. Do it, yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you, Franco. Thank you, Rath. Down, down. Let's head out. That was awesome. I really appreciate you doing that. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Peace. We are at the Roman Anton podcast part three with Pablo Pobleroy. Not Pobleroy like I first said. Pobleroy. Yeah, Pobleroy. Pobleroy. She's not even getting it right. Like, you uh, want me to accentuate my, the Leroy? Well, it's a, like, um, there's a, my family used to be like, there's a, my nickname in my family is Pablito. 
Pablito, little Pablo. Yeah, so like, and this is a stupid, uh, like, uh, Pablo, Pablito, clavón, clavito, un Pablito. This is uh, a okay. tongue twister, right? All right. So it's, pa it's but it's, uh, it's, it's counterintuitive. It's not saying Pablito, it's Pableroy. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me your actual name was Leroy Jenkins. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leto is better. All right, so hey, here we are at Kratang Tiang. The spot. The man Niab is inside getting us some grub here, and we are outside drinking a couple of beverages. Right on the Saab Sam San Seb Klong. Right, Rath? San yeah. Seb. We've been here before with Ike Nuanko, mm. a uh, former national basketball champion at UCLA Bruin. We came down after we met with him and played some basketball. Frank and I played him. And so we, we are fond of the Sunset Canal, but that's two intersections over. That was okay, down by yeah. Osok. There's some really awesome graffiti down that way. Yes, this is probably my favorite thing about this whole thing, which uh, I would suggest that if, I don't know if you care about B-roll, but there's a really dope, we will like, do fresh that. paint. It's literally fresh paint painted like Good. at the turn of the year. Because I've been looking for a graffiti artist to talk to in town. Obviously, there's some ones that I know and we all know because we see them, but there's the one that does the Tweety Birds. They mm. did one at Brownstone. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah, the, uh, I think it's that bird. Moa Bon, I think yeah. is the name. Or, so I, I, I'm not too sure who. But anyway, so that's another topic. Yeah. But lots of graffiti here. Does. Yeah. So, so you, I asked you where you wanted to go, What do you? where did you like in town, and you mentioned this. Uh -huh. And I said, okay. And then I, I mentioned another place. Uh, but we straighten it out, and so you you come here. You live ne nearby here. Yeah, I, I come I, I come here a bit. Like um, this is where I try to make a habit of writing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is your like, spot. If I'm here, that means I'm productive. Right? Oh, like, good. Um, this, so if I if uh, admittedly uh, it's been like a week since I came, so right. No, no so, judgment. Uh, well, this so that's it. Um, it's how I get myself to get into a habit. Uh, it's the walkover. I, I come with a book, I read like a little bit. Um, Fiction, uh, whatever? Yeah, whatever, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, just like, because I, I find a lot of times um, what I'm writing about is, uh, is sometimes synthesizing what I'm reading about. Mm, too much or um, enough or not enough or um, if you read about cyborgs, are you going to write about cyborgs well, or whatever there? Yeah, like, um, is, I guess, it, in a way, like uh, right now, like for example, uh, when I was writing this stuff, I, I, it was um, tales of the city. Learning about like shadow shit, like uh, Carl Jung stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like learning, okay, shadow, and then so it's that I would. So it's a a, a a process of I come, I read, I I draw, um, I do like illustration, huh. um, and I write first, and then I illustrate around the writing. Just to kind of spark the shit up, you know. You got I mean? any in your bag there? Um, I, probably pictures. Huh. Uh, all right, that's all right. No, I don't want to, but yeah, yeah. we didn't talk about that. That's sort of funny that that slipped through the cracks. Yeah, that's it, because um, I'm, I'm trying to, um, I've been exploring, this is, a, I'm exploring NFT shit, so I'm trying to just yeah, think, of course. Oh, what would be a cool way to make an NFT project? I'm thinking, oh, little, like, cool passages, well, thesis statements, right? It's actually, I've, the real, real value of this has become is how I come up with my thesis statements yeah, yeah, yeah. of that I incorporate into a, a, another piece of work. Yeah, I'm getting your, I'm getting your thesis statement now. Yeah, so, I'm getting your themes here. So that's what this helps me do is I come, mm. and like whatever, like uh, I, I, I read, I write, I make a quick drawing. Um, I call it black and blue because I'll have a, a blue paint pen and a black permanent marker. And that's it. Just a blue, a big, like a big pen, like ink pen, and yeah, then like a black a, uh, magic marker. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, so just the two. Yeah, and then yeah. and then a pen. I also have a blue pen and a black pen, so okay. I use those four and try and make some cool shit. Uh, so do you have those four items in your bag as writing tools all the time, or no? No, I should have it. I should fucking have it right now. Uh, this is a test of my preparedness. And do you have that? Is that an art school thing, or is that a? Um, nope, I don't have it. I okay. should have it in this pocket. You rushed out to come meet us today, <laughs> early. Yeah. So do you? Did you? Where do you get that habit from? Carrying the gear? Is that? Um, um, sketching how long? Actually, that's new. That's a new habit. Okay. So th this is. Um, there you go. Forgot it. Uh, trying to. Um, 
again, just try to branch out a yeah, little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. Some shit I don't normally do, but like, remember I told you my, in the magnet program, I chose photography. Yeah. Photography was only half of the year. The other half was drawing and painting and sculpting. And Same shit. school? Same, literally, it yeah, was yeah. like, like half the year you're with the photography teacher, half wow. the year you're with the art teacher. And so the, uh, so did the, the, it seems like magnet school photography is a large imposition of cost. Yo, there was a fucking dark room. I was in, I was in fourth grade in a fucking dark room. <laughs> so do like, you, do they give you a camera? Yeah, they, it was like a um, lone camera or something. I imagine, yeah. Well, I don't have it still, right? So yeah, it was yeah. one of those like uh, you, the school you, they, they yeah. issued you the camera. Yeah, they, that's totally like, legit. Yo, real talk. They told us, okay, we would have to buy our own film, whatever. But they, this is where this uh, right film was the, the only thing, right? Yeah. Um, like, so I'll give you the gun, but not the bullets. Yeah. Hmm. So it was like, and real talk, we were there. Like, it's ridiculous. I, I don't re realize this, but like, yeah, like learning like the chemicals, you put the, you, you put the yeah, film sure. in, in the thing that projects it and you put the, the picture, I forgot all the names of right, all right, the shit. Right, 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 right. But then you dip it in the thing and then you dip it in the other thing. So, and yeah, like, I was yeah. doing that shit at fucking eight years old, eight, nine years old. And so you, when you tried to come back in and do that for the second round, it just didn't materialize in high school. Um, no, I, I was, I was definitely past that. Uh, um, yeah. uh, I was trying to be an engineer for sure. Do you think that's a perished skill or a perishable skill? I mean, do you think digital has wiped that out along with a million other skills? Well, that's a good question uh, because I imagine. And do you want that to be the result? Do we do we want those arts to die? I mean, so such a weird idea. I don't, but I guess if we're talking about process, right? Like, right. Like, um, you're, you're a, a, a maker of an instrument, right? Yeah. 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 Um, there might be ways, very traditional ways of creating certain instruments, right? It's all then, handmade. Then there's other ways of mass producing them, right? Digital SCADA. You, you talked about having uh, computer mm. proficiency and design. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that? CAD? Yes. You, yeah. Put the program in and let it cut, right? So I imagine there's something to be said about preserving the process. Um, Isn't there just, only that to be said? The meaning that, that it, like, firstly, just, it's OG, right? Like, it's the... That's the tale of the city, right? You mm, go to meet the OG, mm, in his words of wisdom, right? Isn't exactly that the... Right. It's, 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 well, there it's definitely that. It's the OG is telling, the first is like, yo, if you see someone in Cambodia who's like, <laughs> 80 they seen some shit like, you know what i mean like you get the words of wisdom yeah right that's the opening line um you also use that in the uh the birds uh you you mentioned those sources yes. of information coming together right the uh, alligator poem is yeah, about yeah. that yeah. yeah um it's a legitimate theme right and mm. i think it, it yeah so yeah yo uh, so i i think the process of of like this is how pictures used to be made, right? Yeah. Like that's. I think it's important to preserve that. But is it important as the artist? Like, can you be? Are you less of a photographer? Right, right. I don't know because the composition is a lot, right? right? Like, like the what's in the phone frame? How do you do it? Like that's. That's the know? whole subjective and, piece. And yo, know, like I find I find see myself a photographer simply because of that, right? Uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I do, and I still as a hobby, I do it. But like, yeah. I'm not good at Photoshop to make when I click when I click the image, right? There's still a ton of editing that is involved that I I yeah. don't care for. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's right. So right. there's a technical skill and artistic skill. So I, I imagine it's a new process. Yeah. It's worth preserving the old process in the same way, like, right? A rapper, I like as a rapper. I need to follow the trail of who's my favorite rapper, who's their favorite rapper. Right? You've decided you need to follow that. Well, trail. no, I think that's how. Like, firstly, culture is how that's how it's disseminated, right? Is you follow a lineage, and in hip hop culture, it's that's it. You have to understand. It, it's the same with the dancers, right? Yeah. Um, like this is again, I learned this those Sundays I told you about with me, Rory DJs, and the dancers come, and I realize like, yo, these people are not just dancing; they're preserving history. Yeah. Right, they're preserving history and, and the dance style and how it evolves over time, right? Uh, if, if you're doing the dance and you don't care to learn about everything that made it manifest, it's bullshit, right? So I think that's part of, mm. that's part of the practice. As it, if, 
if you're an MC, that's what you're doing. Yeah. That's what you're doing as an MC, as a dancer, as a DJ, as a as a beat maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess you know. On, on the other hand, um, natural born. Sure, and like of course, this is a, obviously this is a. How do you say? This is like the bitter old guy talking, right? Like, <laughs> um, there's some of that because yeah, the yeah. most popular hip hop artists of the day aren't necessarily students of the of the yeah, culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, but it, I think it is important to know, understand the context, yeah. right? Why this exists. Yeah. I, I, I mean, look, I'll, all I can say is I agree. I mean, I think of uh, the the Michael Jordan, LeBron, Kobe debate. Mm. You know, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell. You know, how far do we go back? You know, it, it always happens, and it's good to see students, right? You know, and some of my favorite photos are are print photography. But now I sit and I look at the NFT. Do you want the NFT to monetize, or do you see value in the NFT as I'm, Pablo? I'm trying to learn what this is about. Um, I'm trying to basically. In the same way, how can I be creative and create, do something cool and different? Like that's what I feel with the point of view I told you about with, yeah. with this latest wasabi bite. I thought that's I I got it here. I was like, oh, this is yeah, cool. Yeah. It's different. I feel like I fit. It, it's natural to me, right? So I'm trying to just experiment. Like, what is as a format, as a medium, as a yeah. just a way of connecting to people? Because one thing I found, um, uh, I was really heavy into the NFT stuff, um, just as research and. Um, I, I've been to a conference, right? And what I've learned is there's something to be said about the community aspect of it, where, like, yo, I showed up to a city and met people who are my internet friends. You oh, know really? What I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was the same as if it was on a Zoom or a Discord call, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh, this is kind of fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's little clubs for every little niche, right? So there was there was the musicians club where, like, yo, everyone who's part of this community we we're gonna be based in this studio here so uh, like this is where like just come through yeah. different programs coming so like i saw value in that as a community building tool you know what i mean yeah, in a way sure. especially now like zoom life right where we are like the music i'm making with Gra with graham and all the wasabi all of us are, we're spread out right we don't see each other when we're making these songs anymore uh, um so like there's something to be said about online relationships where did you and, do your recording of your songs uh at the crib uh, yeah, into uh, phone. Uh, I have a, so I have my little my my booth. So you have a mic or yeah, I have yeah, I have okay. the setup. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like that's what I'm saying. Is do you stand up and do it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And do you uh, wear shoes and like are you clothed and are you striking I'm, a pose there and like saying I'm I'm ready to go to work? I'm probably dressed like this. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so, I, yeah, okay. I wear the same shit all the time. Right, okay, so, but it's not like laying down casual. Like no, unless it's like really late, right? And it's like I'm trying to get some shit done that I should have finished. Yeah, right? okay, like, so you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I honestly do, I'm a big a believer of like, yo, put on the pants to go to work. Yeah, and I wasn't asking that jokingly. I mean, I, no, it's, it's part the, of the process. I the feel new like. work from home environment creates yeah. some paradigms that maybe are lend themselves to lack of repetition. No, it's true. <laughs> if you're laying down, you're probably not going to do 100 reps. One of the books that changed my life is a, a, a book called Habits by Charles, or The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Huh. Um, and it's literally how I have, I've, based off of what that book says, I've created my practice routines. Um, for? Like for everything. For, like for poetry? Like, for poetry, for wasabi bites, for like, I told you a milkshake. For working out, for your workshake? I told you, I, I reward myself with a milkshake. That's uh, literally okay. from that. I, I see, I see. So that was borrowed language from a, 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 a studier of, mm. of habits. So reward yourself for a job well done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't making fun of it. I just didn't no, understand what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's part of it. It's part yeah. of the process. Like, all right, the, yeah. the like, this is. Yeah, come on. Thank you. Sorry, sir. The master of the residence right here. Thank you, Ham. And Kratang Tiang means once again what? Uh, until noon. Until, until noon. noon. But come early, come late. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Kratang Tiang. Niab. I uh, got some grub there if you want to eat it. Oh, thank you, um, guys. Um, so this sensation of a cold coffee against my hand is, a, is something. A I reward. Is a design, is a trigger. So ah, a trigger. It's like I start my day. 
um, this sensation means I'm getting started, right? Uh-huh. Like, I, I'm, like, at least from what I learned from this book is train yourself like mm. like how I'm training my dog Marley. Like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. like when he, he when he hears the flip of the of the Tupperware, he right. knows food's coming. Food's coming. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys want to cross on? It's bread products. I'm right. He's cutting it in fours. Look at that. I was just gonna eat half and <laughs> let everyone fend for themselves. Kratong's on the river. Um, I'm gonna go half. I'm not that generous on this one. I missed out last time. Last song. Mm. I saw a, um, going through YouTube the other night, I saw a, um, the Versailles restaurant in Miami, mm-hmm. in uh, Little Havana. I think, did someone just, the owner just pass away? No, I just saw that. It's on CNN no or idea. something. It's this Miami clip. I, was, yeah. I remember that place, white and green. Remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah, yeah. So, the discipline for your various skills then comes in the form of coming here or, or sitting and... and re- yeah, coming here came out of like designing a, a habit loop for myself. Getting out of the house? Yeah, that was a big part of it. Do you have to leave? Not always, but if I don't, it can be a problem sometimes because mm. you're subject to the chaos of the home, you know what I mean? Like, like, like... The dog. The Marley barking every fucking two hours. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Love him to death. Right. He barked. Right. Um, Is so, he a yeah. sheep dog? He's like, um, uh, it's a mixed dog. He's small. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just loud. And right. Did you find him or did you buy him or how'd you? Um, Sandra, my partner, she brought him from, from Florida. Wow. Yeah. That's a commitment, bringing a dog in. Yeah, she brought a Marley to Jacksonville, Florida. For, yeah, Marley from Florida Jacksonville. Dog, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is to me. <laughs> Marley's from Jacksonville. <laughs> There's my dog, Marley from Jacksonville. <laughs> like attaching that geography really humanizes the pet, right? Mm-hmm. I had a life overseas. Came over. We've never really asked Marley what he thinks of the move. <laughs> right? But Marley. <laughs> may really not like his skin condition, but may like the fur much okay, better well. here. <laughs> right? Like, I wonder what Marley thinks of this climate. God, I'm he waking thinks up. he owns it, for right. sure. All right. And doesn't wake up with distress? No, he's yeah. his, his land. His piss is everywhere. All over this canal is his piss. What's the main line to a million dollar? <laughs> no pressure, Marley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, good. So you've got other spots. I mean, so you've got Lyrical Lunacy has venues it likes. You've mentioned those. Um, when you leave town, Bangkok, do you do, you do much external travel? Um, Extra. I don't, I don't leave town a lot. Mm. Um, not anymore. I not a beach dude? I, I used to, when I first moved here, I was moving around a lot, but no, I, I stay put. I try not to leave, because like I said, every time I leave, I feel like shit changes. Yeah. Like, um, I get stuck, or, right, like, new weed land, right, 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 right. some shit, like, I try to stay put. <laughs> How about the... Um, um, so sort of some of the consistent wording or verbiage, verbiage um, links to higher level gods or deities. Mm. Is, does that influence your work or does that, I'll give you a, a second to, to chew on that. I, I'm going to see if they had waters too. Um, yeah, did, did we order waters or no? I forget. That's all right. My bad. So, um, Anything in that regard, or is that? Yeah, I, so. I feel like it's dangerous territory to go into. I'm about, that's my favorite shit. <laughs> that's my favorite shit. Um, Why? Because. Well, we've gone over your history, and you said it was apart from teaching at 19 year old a class in a Baptist church, mm. or uh, not a lot of mm. religious expeditions with the family? No, well, my, so my mom's Catholic, my dad's everything. Right. He's, he's, he's everything. Okay. Uh, so right. he's, right now, he's Jewish. All right. Um, so, uh, but yeah, my dad's been through the gamut of spirituality. My mom is, uh, she grew up Catholic. My, my grandpa is a devout Catholic. My mm-hmm. mom's not really So religious. is grandpa from Honduras? Yeah. Is mom from Honduras? My mom is born in Tegucigalpa. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. 
Um, yeah, my mom was born in Tegucigalpa and came, literally, she, she got married early and, and had kids early and, and moved here very shortly after, yeah. That's funny, and I've never heard someone um, who knows how to say that word say that word to me, the capital. Oh, te <laughs> yeah, Tegucigalpa, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> what was the nickname of what, that Jankovic? <laughs> Jankovic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it's uh, hard to brand that city, huh? Yeah, yeah, so have you been back? <laughs> Yo, have, the last time I went was probably when I was like 10. Yeah, yeah memories been... or no? Yeah, definitely memories. Um, like the airport gift shop or something useless? No, because like, well, we used to go a lot like, for, like to visit my grandparents. Uh -huh. They lived there. Now they live in, in Miami. But my grandparents lived there for... How was that transition for them? Um, Happy and peaceful because it was calm or nightmare because it was calm or um, not calm? Or? I, think it's, I think it's positive for them because literally every single one of their children were in Florida. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so, so just a homecoming yeah. or a, a home reunification. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice everyone right now. Like, like for, for example, like when, you look at, when I look at videos of like when we were young, it's videos of us um, talking to my grandpa, like, hey, Papa Rene, we miss you. We hope uh, yeah, we can yeah, come yeah, yeah, and visit yeah. us. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, damn. Like, he, he like, right, he would, they were His name is Rene? Uh, yeah. Nice. Um, it's like a French influence or something. Yeah, it's a, I wonder, yeah, it's a good question. Um, yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. Um, there, it's nice to have them here, but I used to go there, like, uh, as a really small kid, like not past 10 years old, um, yeah. but we would go there a lot and visit them. And then like um, my grandpa, my grand uncle and my grandpa's brother would have like a farm and we'd go to the farm, you know what I mean? Like What type of farm? What, uh, animals, uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, um, trees? I think, uh, I think mostly animals, rubber. if I remember, like he had horses and cows. Um, yeah, it's a very big, expensive area. Um, some corn, maybe nice. like it was very young. Um, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. But I remember a memory, early memory of that is like I, we. Uh, my, I was walking with my grandpa, and the cow head butted me. Like, just like, <laughs> you, you think that happened? Huh? You think that really happened? Oh, it definitely happened. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Yeah. So life on the farm. So this expansive place where animals can attack. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that's like, oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> it, it hurt, but it wasn't like traumatic. Right. right? right. So, oh shit! The motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> was it at elevation or was it lowland? I think it was uh, like mid elevated. Yeah, like, so there was mountains, the mountains around, but cool it was still night. kind of flatty. Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. I mean, it's. Uh, Guaymaca is the area. Guaymaca yeah. is the name of the area. Um, so we would visit. So visit my grandparents. Stay there for like the summer. Visit there at a certain point for a week or something. Um, but yeah, after ten, I didn't go back. Um, haven't been back. No. What was the chili thing? Was that family or was that? Uh... Oh, so yeah, my family lived there. So this is so as as I said, uh, or maybe I didn't. My parents are, are separated. Or not not together no, the divorce just dragged that out of you finally so, so i didn't mean um, to do that yeah so um so yeah the chile was when they lived together um so my dad uh and my mom and everyone was living in, in iquique so who's chilean none of us actually uh, so um, it was just so a it was just where wow. like um so i guess as you can say it's uh, it runs in the blood but my dad also started an airline in chile there we go yeah so um so it was like a low, first, probably the first low-cost carrier on the planet maybe it was this way that was the idea it was like a bus wow to shuttle people up and down the, the country um and then so yeah my parents divorced there so i don't mm. know, i don't remember none of that um like literally i think the first memory real literal memory is because my mom sent us in advance and my one of my first memories is my mom coming from chile to miami and wow. re reunification yeah so um but yeah and then like whatever shit went south and then we left chile yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah huh you ever see yourself wh where do you see yourself going you staying here indefinitely i don't know man it's actually it's i i one of the theses i came up here came up with here is fixed in fucking flux fix and flux that's mm. how i feel um like a mangrove tree you're stuck but you're in the water always changing um and so yeah it's, it's, i'm ag very agnostic to where i end up i'm, I'm about to have a a, a, a child right hey. so, so we're 
Congratulations. Um, we were thinking about leaving, but then like, no, we'll stay, but we'll probably end up leaving. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Huh. So and I'm here. So, so the mango, <laughs> the mango in the sky, the Van Gogh in the eye, what was that? Uh, that was the line you had in, uh, in chapter nine on the oneness section. <laughs> Am I wrong? Mm. You like that mango thing, huh? Yeah, sorry, I catch you at the mouthful. Uh, I got water, take your time. We can always cut this stuff out if you spill. Um. But the lotus too seems to invade so, an earlier part. We're talking of that. about like mythology and yeah, 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 yeah. I love that shit. I always yeah. have loved that shit. Um, and I, I find it a nice way to uh, find commonality. Like, it, it, like having an interest in mythology made me understand the cultures here more, yeah. more appropriately. Um, and I think it's a, just a good medium to compare and contrast and like, yo, same, same, but different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's foolish to not absorb or contextualize Buddhism here and try and understand the culture, right? I mean, it's just, it's so elemental that, and I noticed you quoted some of your lyrics refer to Hanuman or other deities mm, here. That's, so just, that's what that line was about, for sure. Right, and it's just, it's so, so mm. omnipresent here, right? Mm. So I definitely, it's a way I look at the world, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, was that Florida-based thinking, or is that later? I would say, I mean, as a kid, you have interest in, like, Greek mythology. I, in, I remember being in the library at school looking for, like, uh, Egyptian mythology, Norse mythology, like just looking for all this shit. Right? Any so, more or less than wanting to be a fireman or a space No, it's just astronaut. what I like. Yeah, it's just what my interest, right? Like, uh, Was um, it exclusive? Didn't you also like, uh, you know, drag car racing or... Not you know, really. Um, astronauts? Pilots? I like, I like airplane shit always. Yeah. So like that's this type of... I would be in the library looking for like airplanes. Mm. Uh, like I, I'm very into geopolitics uh, too, so I had like, uh, like I, I'm, I don't know why, but that's what I would do when I was 17 in the library of high school and looking at geopolitics books, huh. looking at airplane books, uh, drama books too, like because that's the like looking at the plays they have, trying to yeah, make yeah. my monologue, study that shit. Um, have you ever memorized the lengthy monologue? I mean, it seems to me like you have. Well, that's what it's, I feel like a spoken word poem is right. a lengthy monologue. Right. Have you ever tried to do someone else's? The only one auditioning, no, yeah. uh, no, I'm a liar. Uh, as I said, uh, <laughs> You're not a liar. You forgot. Uh, <laughs> my teacher, uh, my teacher would uh, miss Q. Q. She miss would Q. push you in different directions. So there was a competition. Memorize this five-page speech and come no, back tomorrow. There, there's a, there's a drama like the statewide drama competition of like the, like literal costume design, mm. script writing, or, or, or musical piece. So like. Uh, monologue was one of them and so I would enter that what'd down. you do like the, the the Samuel and I will rain down upon you from Pulp Fiction no, Samuel it's Jackson the one, it's the one I think where uh, I think you call it Tale of Two Cities or okay yeah or, it's a scene it's where, time, time. where it's like yo you're my best friend you're my best friend okay yeah. and, <laughs> <laughs> like that like, okay just look just look at the water isn't it relaxing yeah like, sort of street <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> you took an, an ancient modern <laughs> tale <laughs> the betrayal shooting killing thing well good yeah um, smart move well that's interesting because it, it um I think uh, Swordfish and I talked a little bit about this. Um, um, is the phone in your hand for comfort or is it for memory? Uh, you know, when you do pieces, does it, does it sharpen the skills? Does it give you backup? You know, how do you, how do you deliver the two hour monologue? You know, um, when I look at like uh, Chris Rock or the, uh, Dave Chappelle or, you know, these guys, it's some of the shows are lengthy and meaningful and go on and it's just it's, it's a high art form now to do that right yo yeah it's a, you as well you know i looked question. at your 17 minute show and i thought coming in timing dancing you know mm. the the choreographing of that is not just memorizing the pieces huh. that you were singing or speaking yeah well the dancing is that's not choreograph that's just literally just yeah, what but, comes out so for me as a mus as a, a attempted musician you know Thinking that I know this song that I wrote 20 years ago and that I play once every nine years, that I can mm -hmm. play it tonight mm -hmm. when I go play, is ambitious. <laughs> you know, 
asking my bass player who's only known it for five and my drummer who's only known it for three to come up with it and we've only played it twice mm. it's sort of stupid unless we've rehearsed it you know so it's you knowing what to do in minutes three to five when you're not singing okay yeah you're right that, that there is a there is a right yeah. So, and this is a process I'm going with right now with the wasabi spice in preparation for the show. Right. right, so it's the habit thing you're talking about. Like, right, like, it's not minutes three through five, it's minute one to 75 or whatever your set length is. What am I gonna be doing? So I, I, are you that calculated or are you more like punk when it's, I'm gonna smash my guitar maybe during that section? Well, and that comes, honestly, that that comes from the cypher, like when, whether it's a dance cypher, a freestyle cypher, or just like a jazz jam, right? It's knowing, yo, you're, it's not your time right now. Right, because so, as, as the vocalist MC, it's hard to know sometimes. Uh, and the cipher is a spiritual thing that's saying that's something just to like, you. It's like, yo, who's in the who's in the, the, the cipher is um, um, when you have a, a group of dancers in a circle, or a group of freestyle rappers in a circle. Uh -huh. That's a cipher going around. Um, okay, it's like okay, I do my sixteen bars now. You go, you do your sixteen. Not, so not, okay, so okay, so I didn't um, know what cipher was. It was like was. a okay. jam, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so that comes from that is like um oh. all right you're not okay you're you're here obviously you're not holding an instrument right like how do you contribute yeah, yeah how yeah. can you contribute that isn't overbearing and you're not taking attention right from steve while he's <laughs> doing the keys right right like, right um how can you contribute um and the, for me is that it's, it's dancing and and like that's where i'm like you have to be able to be the fool, right? That's yeah. how I see it sometimes, because it's like, what am I doing? I don't know, I'm just, just... Okay, just that's what you meant earlier it. when you said that, yeah, mm. yeah. So, um... So do you have go-to moves in your head that you do? Um, not really. I, I have, like, um, let me see. There's there's one... <laughs> I'm not being a wise guy, I don't know no, how this works. Like, I not just... really, it's just like, how do I feel? Like, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, then Again, thank you to the dancers for that, because, right, right. like, that's... Firstly, I, I observe them, and I realize, oh, you're not... This isn't a routine. This is just what you did here. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, so, yeah. yeah right. Basically, learn that from from street dancers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we just recorded your song, and and um, I said this to you. I said, "Well, we're at the end of this table in my podcast room. You're singing, and you're singing, and we're making eye contact. And mm -hmm. I didn't feel uncomfortable, but I thought this feels burdensome <laughs> to the performer. Like." Mm. Like, I get that he's a professional and does this, but like sitting here in this small room where there's no audience and there's cameras. Yeah, it's a different type of, of situation. Right, like, and I sure. thought, I'm borrowing time on this one, so just sort of cipher back or whatever, however I verb that. Mm. It was a funny thing for me to sort of sit there and I thought, well, we're both here to do a thing, so well, let's it, do it. And funny enough, like, I love that that dynamic is the dynamic that every performer has, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, um because you have this thing you've worked on and rehearsed yeah yeah and the the locking of a gaze is adds a different type of complexity to yeah, it yeah. right yeah um like we just did there mm. like i'm not sure what that was <laughs> and i felt a little shy so, so learning for, for for i think it's important um that uh like artists find comfort in that because firstly anytime for example, if you're on a stage, you're in the power position, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like I I don't I try to maybe reinforce this idea, but like no one knows what you're gonna do or how you're supposed to do it. Right, right. Um, and so yeah, I do you flip out, um, whatever. Uh, 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 I think after you've memorized everything and you did that work, the next step is that you have to make it engaging to the people, and and find comfort in in when that complexity comes, yeah. you know. Um, cause there's always going to be a curveball, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and you always wonder as you progressively move up the level of public address to the dining room table with your family, to mm -hmm. the classroom, to a public address on a topic, to presenting, to leading the nation. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that all it's, changes, right? But it's a crucial just to communicate. Uh, that, yeah. I'm a, I, to me, all all the art, everything is just a communication of an idea of a uh, thesis that I think is important. Every human, you should know how to write, right? Uh, you should know how to express an idea artistically too. Uh, just the core, core literacy. I feel is that. So yeah. Well, I think your core literacy has changed in your social media presentation dramatically, and I think. 
this wasabi bites tail of the city is something to behold. So I'm glad you guys are touring this. I hope you guys have a good tour. I hope you all try and listen to this on Spotify or if you take a look at it. Uh, it's awesome, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys do uh, t collectively together and what you do independently. And hopefully I'll see you around town. But uh, Kratang, Kratang Tiang uh, until noon, afternoon. Uh, Niab and the crew here. Great place to stop. I hope I hope we see some traffic here. But yeah, uh, the bridge, is, go to Tonglor at the end. The bridge, turn left and walk along the canal. It's Tonglor right left bridge. Got that? All right, or or right to Roman Anton, and we'll get fit you here. But it's a pleasure meeting you today, Pablo. Yeah, Likewise. I enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. Thank thanks, you. guys. Thanks. All right. One, two, three, quiet.